is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, hello. Well, let's get back to it. Well, that was unexpected. We uh, we lost to Brazil. It's the shirt what done it. No! It's increased the swishification of uh, our once great nation. You believe that? <laughs> Uh, we were talking about the word gammon last night. I, I, know, I know it's an insult, and I know that uh, certain people don't like it, but we, we, it, it is, um, I think it goes back to Dickens. I think Dickens was the, the first person who used it. And um, the first modern use of gammon, uh, as uh, found by my glamorous assistant through the glass there, uh, is described as follows. Anoush Chakelian of the New Statesman has traced the first use of the word gammon back to the Times columnist Caitlin Moran, who described the former Prime Minister David Cameron as a, <laughs> as a, as a C-3PO made of ham. <laughs> a, a slightly camp gammon robot. <laughs> Excellent work there, Caitlin Moran. I think this is nonsense. Yeah, well, you would. You, you just would, yeah. <laughs> C-3PO made of ham. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? <laughs> Jan text. These are texts and tweets from last night. Jan text. James Cleverly's trip to Rwanda by private jet cost more than £165,000. That's where our money goes. What a complete waste. This government really does spend money like it's going out of style. No wonder we owe uh, nearly £3 trillion. That's true. £3 trillion. This one uh, think, uh, says uh, it's going to be hilarious if we win this Euros and the shirt is immortalised forevermore. Yeah, it will be, yeah. <laughs> Krista says, I'm doing something cultural. I have for two years been building an underground den under my local golf course because I can't afford to move out of my mum and dad's. It's now got three rooms and is accessed by a hole in the ground amongst a bunch of brambles in the middle of a thick hedge. I'm a student engineer. I'm looking forward to one day moving in uh, another year and it'll be done. Earlier today, I moulded a bed out of wet mud. <laughs> earlier today, I moulded a bed out of wet mud. I wonder if I'm the only one doing this, says uh, Kristen. Yeah, I think you probably are, yeah. And uh, Rebecca says, my theory on why Titchy suit size is gripping it is uh, when it comes to remaining prime minister is that having, I read that all wrong, but I, it's more or less there or thereabouts. So the theory on why Titchy suit size is gripping it is that having billionaires as the spouse and the in-laws must induce feelings of inadequacy without the power that his position affords him. It's possibly the only period he has, fe he has felt on an equal footing we should have a whip round for him to make him rich enough to call the general election. Well, I've um, uh, I've posited that thought uh, there or, or thereabouts myself. Yeah, I suspect that that may be part of it. Part of the reason why he seems so weirdly desperate to cling on a onto a job that he's uh, obviously unsuited for, and that pays um, just change like walking around money. And Greg texts, didn't the forever enraged rally round a party, UKIP, who seem to have interesting ideas about our flag in their logo? What do you think, says Greg? Yeah, I think you're completely correct in every respect. That's right. They, to they took our national flag and made it purple. What? Yeah. Various shades of purple they made it. And um, Uncle Nige was uh, hyperventilating on uh, one of those uh, TV uh, channels. And uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I could not stand to watch him, uh, the to watch the entire clip. But basically, he was, uh, you know, all, all of that. It's an absolute disgrace, desecrating our national flag. But they did it themselves. The party that he used to run desecrated the flag by turning it purple for crying out loud. Plus, he probably still does this. Last time I was in a room with him, he was wearing Union Jack socks. He took our flag and put his feet on it. I'm a nutcase. That is a disgrace. 0345 uh, Heston, Isaac. Hello, good evening. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, about the England shirt. Three <laughs> things, right? A couple of three things. Couple of, okay. Yeah. Number one, if I'm going to buy at buy an English shirt at one hundred twenty four pound ninety nine. Yes. Number one, I want a ninety nine p discount. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because okay, to make it even right. more and even <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That'd be a bargain. You you should buy two at that price. Exactly. Uh, number two. Right. Um, if I'm going to buy an England uh, shirt at £124, mm. then I, I want it made of solid gold. Yes. Right? That seems okay. reasonable. Yeah. And number three, I'll do one of two things. I'll either invest it, uh, no, um, no, I'll either uh, store it away in a Knights, Knightsbridge safe deposit box, mm -hmm. okay? In London, yeah. or what I, or the other thing I could do is do what the super wealthy do, right? Okay, and that is uh, invest it in um, an offshore tax haven such as Guernsey, Jersey, Isle of Man, Bermuda, yeah. Virgin Islands. One of those, <laughs> one of those places has got the Union flag fluttering on their uh, government buildings, and uh, they have uh, lots of office blocks that are uh, curiously the uh, the address for thousands of companies, and yet no one ever goes there. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you know, so, so so with that England shirt made of solid gold, solid gold, it would be a great investment. Yes, there it would. Go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, well, I wish you the best of luck with that, uh, Isaac. I'll see. Thanks. I'll see you down the beach. Thanks a lot, mate. Anita says, what's the fuss regarding the new emblem? Nothing is made in the UK by the British. Not even fish and chips. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, even our fish and chips is not made by British people anymore. Can you believe that? Gary says, these snowflake patriots crying about the cross of St. George. In the good old days, the Sex Pistols put an image of the Queen on the Union flag and stuck a safety pin through her nose. That's right. Yeah, they were all, uh, very much. Rock and roll! And then, uh, uh, and, and then at least the lead singer wasn't anymore. Not anymore. Caroline says, sorry in advance, sorry in advance to the Fury Brigade, but as the Union Jack is a design mess... Why can't we have a beautiful unicorn or something? A unicorn! Oh. That's an excellent idea, Caroline. Claire says, I've, I've got loads of these from last night. It's like about ten pages of them. <laughs> I'm very bad at my job. Correct. Claire says, it's a brilliant time to remember that St George was a Greek warrior who had never heard of England, and his cross is a symbol of his martyrdom in Rome. He's also patron saint of Catalonia and Ethiopia. So, Ingerlish, it's a games kit. Everyone needs to calm the flip down, says Claire. Well, there's not much chance of that, Claire, because they've ramped it up to, uh, they've turned it up to 11 today. There was some individual, <laughs> some individual who was, um, they had a rally, didn't they, in uh, Parliament Square, I believe. I mean, I, admittedly, I wasn't that interested in what they had to uh, do or say, but I, you know, I, I was uh, perusing social media. And there's absolutely nothing social about it, anti-social media, and there appeared to be uh, some shouty types who were having a parade or a, a, a gathering, a furious gathering of some sort, and they were <laughs> orga organising a, a boycott of uh, Nike. You know Nike. <laughs> Yeah, that's them. They were organising a boycott of Nike while wearing Nike trainers. What? That actually happened. It just gets sillier and sillier. I restate my case. This is a silly country now. But have you heard? It's, it's even worse than that. I'll get on that in a minute. Monica says, Nick, the shirt will become a collector's item and your callers will feel rather foolish. Well, <laughs> the, the one does not have to follow the other. I think some of our callers can go ahead and start feeling rather foolish now, and it might become a collector's item later. But the two might not be connected, necessarily. I think it probably will become a collector's item. It is fl <coughs> flying off the shelves, apparently. They're selling more of them than uh, at any point in uh, history. I don't know whether that's true, but even if it isn't, it doesn't prevent it from being a fact. Bridget says, it's quite simple. If football supporters don't like the New England strip, they don't need to buy it. Revolutionary, I know. Until the punters stop buying this overpriced tat, they will continue to be exploited. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get it. I mean, you know, I like... I, the football is really the only sport that I would watch outside of the Olympics, when, as I've previously stated, I would watch absolutely anything. Append those five rings to anything at all, I'll watch it. 
But um, other than that, it's pretty much the only game I would sit there and watch. And uh, yeah, I just don't really get this obsession with buying the kit all the time. It, I mean, it really is overpriced tat. It's polyester, for crying out loud. You'll, it'll stink to high heaven after about two wears. I mean, there's, you, you can't beat that stink out of it, never mind about wash it out. Uh, it's the kind of thing that comes out of a, a, a washing machine. It's already dry. How does that work? But what is the obsession about, uh, about A, complaining about how much it costs, and B, insisting on buying it? Just stop buying it, and they'll stop making it that expensive. I promise that's true. That is guaranteed. I mean, it didn't used to be that much. It seems to, well, it's like everything else, isn't it? You, you go to the uh, the checkout of the supermarket, and you 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 see the, you see the amount go up and up and up. It's like sitting in the back of a cab. You can see the 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 uh, amount that your journey is uh, costing just ticking up and up. And um, <laughs> you've you've got half your goods still yet to be booped, boop, and it's already in three figures. How did that happen? Didn't used to be one hundred and twenty-four pound ninety-nine. It used to be like sixty quid. And, and and when people heard that it was sixty pounds, they said, "What? <laughs> sixty for that? Now it's double that. Good grief!" But if you keep buying it, they'll keep making it, and they'll keep making it that expensive. That is absolutely true. Vince texts, those angry people are going to be furious if they ever find out the following. St. George isn't just the patron saint for England. He also holds this position for Aragon, Catalonia, Georgia, Lithuania, Palestine, Portugal, Germany, Greece, Moscow, Istanbul, Genoa and Venice. Wherever they are. Probably best not to tell them, says Vince. Too late. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. What number are you calling from? I'm calling from 0345 6060 973. Uh, these are texts and tweets from last night. Dougie Doogie texts. I've only got three words. Actually, I've got considerably more, but three will do. Get a grip. Get a grip, Titchy. I do believe he's actually gripping it already. I'm gripping it. You see, he's gripping it already. Way ahead of you there, Doogie. He says, uh, if indeed your name is Doogie, or is it Dougie? Probably Dougie. Probably yelling at the radio. It's not Doogie, a moron. Moron? <laughs> he says, the new kit looks great, and that's from a, a Scottish guy. What? A Scottish guy. He says, it's not as though St. George was even English. How many of your callers realise that Georgie Boy was actually from the country that we now call Turkey? Yeah, there's a lot of people getting that point in. Yeah. Uh, David says, I see that Nigel Farage is getting a... Or is it Farage or Farage? Um, it depends on his audience, I suppose. If he's uh, talking to people at the Ritz, it's Farage. If he's uh, trying to get away with the, uh, the flat hat and a pint routine, then it's probably Farage. Anyway, he says, I see Nigel Farage is getting all hot under the collar about the colour of the cross. Do you remember the UKIP flag? A blue Union Jack with a yellow UKIP circle in the middle. That's right. Yeah, and um, I think it had a question mark in the middle of the circle, didn't it? Or a pound sign, one of the two. <laughs> Tony says, this week we've seen an attack on the Garrick Club and now the defacement of our national flag. How am I supposed to enjoy being poor and worthless? if people keep trying to dismantle our Britishness. Excellent point, Tony. Just as an aside, uh, by the way, I, uh, I came in here and um, I put my hand on the desk in front of me. You, you may have noticed this uh, yourself, glamorous assistant through the uh, glass there. Are you listening to me? Very much so. Okay. I put my hand on the table here and I felt something uh, small and uh, hard. And um, I picked yeah. it up and it was some, somebody had bitten the, the end of their nail off and had kindly left it for me right what? here in the middle of the desk. Are you yeah. kidding? No, I'm not. That's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, awful. Disgusting. Yeah, isn't that absolutely shocking? <clears throat> they, they'd bitten through the end of their nail and they just left it. <laughs> kindly left it here right in the middle of the desk. And so I was in a quandary because which recycling bin do you put this in, I thought. Well, it's not flat paper, so that's out. And it's not glass and cans, so that's out too. So I suppose I'd have to put it in the food bin because technically people do eat them, don't they? So I hope I've done the right thing. <laughs> 
You're welcome. Thank you. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Let's have uh, Merthyr Tidville. Hello, Jeff. How are you doing, Nick? Okay. What is it? What is it, Tony? Oh, oh wow! Well, see, now you've uh, opened a, a different can of worms entirely. <laughs> Somebody's sitting here biting through their toenails. Oh, they don't take their shoes and socks off. Good grief! Oh, just wondered. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bewildered, confused. I don't know where to turn. Right. I don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> all I know, all I know is, are you drunk? I'm, That's the first question you must ask yourself. Well, I, I feel it is, but I'm not. Uh, have, have you left the it? gas on, but it's not actually lit? Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> Possibly. Um, I see that uh, Kia Starmer, yeah. Sir, mm -hmm. Starmer has, joined in, yeah. uh, has, has joined in this madness. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, I think maybe finds himself on the same wavelength, I suppose, as Farage. Doesn't he? I, mean, I find he's... that hard to believe. I, the only thing I can think that is going on in Keir Starmer's mind that he actually um, launched himself at this was that he was sort of penned in. Whoever was um, questioning him, I, I don't know what the interview, uh, who the interview was, but whoever was questioning him posed this to him, and he couldn't just sort of laugh it off as a sensible politician would. He couldn't just say, "Well, it's nothing to do with me. Who really cares? It's just a shirt for crying out loud. Get over it and grow up." He yeah. couldn't say that because, you know, certain individuals just go apoplectic and start screaming about communists and uh, socialists and all of the rest of it. So he had, to, is, he had to climb yeah. aboard this, 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 this steaming train of outrage. Well, it's left. Where, where's it left? Your friends north of the border for our stoning wheels. We have a flag, remember? Yeah. We've got a different one. There's a pretty good one, too. Yeah, it's a woof. You've got a big, huge, whatever dragon right in the middle of it. What do you mean, and whatever? That... <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. And, and we are now thoroughly confused. They're talking about national pride, bringing the nation together. Yeah, yeah. All stuff like that. Where does that leave us down here? You know, we, we, we're confused and bewildered by it all. What's going on? <laughs> it's it's just too silly. I wouldn't bother yourself with it. You you've got plenty silly enough as it is in Merthyr Tidville, I bet. <laughs> yeah, you know the force of France is turning yeah. into is turning into a major ecological disaster. Turning it into is, it, it, I, I've seen it, pictures it, of it. It isn't major ecological disaster. They've taken the top of a mountain off for crying out loud. You got it, and the thing is filling up with heaven knows what mm. it's it's pitched what you might not know there's a tip called tricati tip which has got full of uh, unbelievable stuff and it's leaching out into this it's uh, you you just can't believe what's going on <laughs> um, and, and it's 120 million please to fill it in they, uh, 120 the million what are they filling it in with football shirts oh. Um, the thing is, we are we we are we are still confused when you talk or they talk or everybody talks mm. about uniting a nation around the flag. Yeah, you, you can see the problem, can't you? I mean, it's there for you. It's 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 farcical. It's pantomime. It's ridiculous. I mean, if if you don't already feel some sense of uh, pride in your country, then um, d doing the having sort of uh, personal relations with the flag Disgusting. isn't going to really help any. And no. and and the more you wrap yourself in it, the less patriotic to me you appear. It's, there seems a certain desperation in that. Yeah, when you raise a flag, Nick you make a political statement if you're in Scotland or Wales because whatever flag you put up, you are making a political statement. This is what people are not realizing. This is what people don't understand. It's, it's become a political thing, hasn't it? But I don't and know, what, what is it that you're saying though? What, what political statement are people making? Well, take, take Wales. Right. Say, you put up, say you put up the Union Jack. Hmm. 
Okay, you are making a political statement. I believe in the unity of the U- UK. Yeah. Um, I'm British first, Welsh next. You put up a Welsh flag. You're saying I'm Welsh. I'm Welsh first. Pretty uh, offensive, know? actually, that Wales does not have a part of the Union flag uh, other oh. than being a, a, a subset of England. Yes. And and it's it's something that causes a political rift. Yeah. So when you put a flag up, you're making a political statement. Right. Same in Scotland. You put a salt air up, or you put a union jack up, or well, I mean, like, would you know? Right. You're choosing one, one or the other. That's what you mean. Yeah. 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 But look, I went to Bath during a Christmas festival a couple of years ago. You know, you go to the market there. I looked up Bath Cathedral, one huge. George Cross flag, huge thing, mm. flying above the cathedral. What is a flag doing on top of a church? <laughs> yeah, you'd think that, I mean, that the, the, the thing that should be actually at the very apex of that church should be sort of God-related. Exactly. Yeah. Unless God is English. Well, I, that's, I, I, that is absolutely true. Any fool yes, know that. that a, yeah. that what did you buy in the market, by the way? Was it some uh, cheap... Uh, Tat made of wood that looks well, like a reindeer. One of those English shirts, you know, right? These. Okay, right. Got it. <laughs> no, I know that ain't true. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Cheers, mate. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. David texts. I see Nigel Farage is getting all hot under the collar about the colour of the cross. Do you remember the UKIP flag? A blue Union Jack with a yellow UKIP circle in the middle. I'm getting deja vu. I think this is a uh, a, a, a blip in the matrix. Uh, Tony says, this week we've seen an attack on the... I've read that as well. Mark says, if we want to invoke the spirit of the last England team to win anything, why not make the flag pink in honour of the Lionesses, the current women's Euros champions? Who could argue with that, says Mark? Well, (laughs) I think this is an entire queue of people uh, just behind me who would like to argue with you about that, Mark. Pink? That's a bit sexist, isn't it? Uh, Martin says, I've just watched Titanic 2. It's the worst film of all time. It's so bad you have to watch it, especially when the Navy sub-commander says, let's get this cigar smoking. It's up there with the Willy Wonka experience. (laughs) Titanic 2. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as, how could there be a Titanic 2? Huh? He's nodding his head. Yeah, it came out in 2010. Uh, they build a ship this time that really, really isn't going to sink. Right. Spoilers. Couldn't couldn't sink at all. Not no, that uh, ship. You'd never guess what happens. No, well, don't tell us. I won't. Don't, don't watch it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be doing that. No. Not now, not ever, never. Titanic 2. It, <laughs> did, it, did it star Jason Statham? <laughs> uh, it, Bruce Davidson and Brooke Burns. Oh. Right, I don't know who that is, but um, not so not Jason Statham then. Got it. Jim says, "I see that <laughs> I see that bookmark, bookmakers have England at the odds of a hundred to thirty to win the Euros." For people who don't understand how odds work, it means that if you put a hundred pound on England to win, you lose a hundred pounds. <laughs> that's a little. Uh, that, that's um, a little lesson in uh, in bookmakers' odds for you. That's what it means. A hundred to thirty. You're just if you put it on England, you're going to lose all of your money. O three, which is probably a very very unpatriotic thing to say, but it also happens to be true. Or does it? Well, we'll find out, I suppose. Knocked out in the in the quarterfinals on penalties, I betcha. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Listen to him. He knows everything. Okay, a couple of texts and tweets from last night, and then I'm uh, into entirely new, fresh texts and tweets. Carlo says... People are clutching their pearls over this blinking flag, but they don't give a hoot about the fact that James Cleverly flew to Rwanda and back in one day to sign a treaty on a private jet that cost us £165,000. Mind you, hearing the Gammonites losing their minds is very funny, says Carlo. And uh, finally from yesterday... Oh, no, there's a couple from yesterday. Mark says, uh, can you lend me the money to buy the England shirt? I live in Jeremy Hunt's consti- uh, constituency and only le- earn 100000 a year, so I can't afford it. 
And uh, finally, says um, Will says, why can't people make their own shirts? It's not like they're playing. <laughs> you can't make a shirt. How can you make a shirt? I mean, I can understand you if you had the skill set that you could knit your own jumper, but how, how does a person make their own shirt? Impossible. Can't be done. And here's the information about that uh, film Titanic 2. I, I don't know if I have the strength. Titanic 2. A hundred years later, lightning strikes twice. <laughs> well, I think they've given away the ending, haven't they? Bruce Davis Davison and Brooke Burns. Never heard of them. I think they went down with that ship. Uh, right, how many... Oh, my God. So many people texting. Uh, the worst... OK, the, my glamorous assistant wants the uh, worst sequel ever. I'll tell you the best sequel ever, and that was uh, Terminator 2. Affirmative. Yeah. There's no, no question about that. That is the best sequel ever made. Um, Jim says, I have solved the Prime Miniatures problem. Instead of flying these boat people, hire a cruise liner and fill it with a thousand of them. Why hasn't he thought of that? Well, it would be the cheaper option. I mean, literally, it would be the cheaper option, considerably. Because, remarkably, that uh, Bibby Stockholm prison barge costs... I think it's one, that and the other two, I think, that they've hired uh, from um, one of their close personal friends. It costs something like £1.2 billion. Pounds. And that's not buying it, that's renting it. I think for three years. This is all off the top of my head. This might not be co completely correct in every respect, but if, even if it isn't, it doesn't prevent it from being a fact. I think it's £1.2 billion pounds to rent them for three years, whereas you could buy the world's most exclusive and luxurious cruise liner for less than that. It really is amazing what's happening in this country. But nobody's paying the slightest bit of attention because um, of this blooming football shirt thing. Mind you, it has uh, given us a lot of uh, great material. So there is that. Matthew says, the unicorn is Scotland's national animal. These English gammon can keep their grubby mitts off it, says Matthew. It's starting a, <laughs> starting a civil war now. Um, Sarah says, have you, heard of, have you had durian fruit? That's the smelly thing, isn't it? He says, I had tried it once, anxiously, whilst in Borneo. It smells like drains, right, and uh, brought on a heaving sensation. My son recently returned from South Korea and brought back some durian sweets. I shall write, write him out of my will, <laughs> says Sarah. That doesn't sound very nice. Durian sweets. It's one of the smelliest things in the world, is it not? It smells like, uh, well, drains would be a good way of putting it. Why would you make sweets out of that? Other than as uh, some sort of joke. But that is excellent work there. I, I would just write him out of that will straight away and throw him out of the house while you're at it. Tony says, the dingalings are saying the country has lost its identity because of the flag changing colour. Maybe we should add England's pronouns to the flag so the dinglings are clear on the country's identity. How about us, them? Us being the poor dopes that pay taxes and them being those that stole the country's identity. This government. That's very, very complicated text there, Tony. I think, um, I, I think you'd better think that one out again. There's so much material to get through. I, I barely know where to begin. I, I, I do want to talk about... There's a, a museum that has um, stoked the flames of uh, the fury mongers ire. And um, I'll, so I'll get to that in a minute. It's about one of their favourite people in the whole wide world ever. And uh, this uh, particular museum disrespected that person. My, and and as, as soon as they find out, once they, start yell, well, once they stop yelling about the shirt, as soon as they find out about it, then they're going to have... Um, they'll they'll, they'll uh, doubtless hold a parade. Valtex, I only have one football shirt, a Millwall one from 2004. Maybe the only year they ever made it to the cup final. Cost about a tenner, maybe less. Too blooming much, Val. And uh, Dave says, instead of the St George's Cross on the shirts... Lost penalties stitched on the back would be more... Lost on penalties stitched on the back would be more accurate. <laughs> yeah, I fear that we are uh, we're in for a major disappointment because we're getting our hopes up, England fans, um, Scotland too. But um, I, I fear that we're going to be uh, cruelly disappointed 
again. I mean, does anybody really believe that we're going to go past the quarterfinals? I mean, come on. It just doesn't happen, does it? Not to us. Uh, and Darius says, I noticed our fun-sized prime... <laughs> Our fun-sized Prime Minister was moaning about the flag on the England shirt, completely forgetting the time when he had a mono-colour union flag on each side of the podium uh, when he had a speech last year. Funny, eh? Yes, that's right. I mean, if only these people have paid attention to what they've said and done in the past, then they'd be hyperventilating less about this nonsense. But like I said, it's worse than that because a museum has stepped out of line. I'll get to that in a minute. But it's actually much worse than that just in general because this country is apparently in great danger and the regime is not doing anything about it. I'm talking about army recruitment levels. I'll just do a short detour into this. Falling levels of recruitment in the British Armed Forces is a profound national security risk, ministers have been told. <coughs> Several recent committee reports have raised concerns about the Ministry of Defence's resources and ability to respond in a range of threats facing the UK. MPs were warned last month that the UK's readiness to fight an all-out war is marred by capability and recruitment issues. In other words, we've lost before the first shot's been uh, fired. In a report on armed forces readiness, the Commons Defence Committee and the government must address the armed forces capability stockpile shortages and recruitment crisis, they were told. The report stresses that the military is consistently overstretched, with demands of operations uh, personnel deployed, leaving little time for training in war fighting, which is, you know, their purpose. So our forces are stretched too threadbare to protect this country. And what does our patriotic government do about that? Sign a deal with Australia to send some of our troops there. What? Yeah, Grant Schnapps, the actual defence secretary, went to Australia and signed a deal to send our military there to protect a country that's so far away you would need a space rocket to go further. Well, the whole world's gone crazy. A report published by the Public Accounts Committee said uh, earlier this month that the Ministry of Defence has no credible plan to fund the military capabilities the government wants and leaves the UK vulnerable to reliance on protection from allies. Huh. And as we can't rely on America, particularly if uh, Donito Mussolini gets back in, that's us relying on, get ready, grip onto something firm, Europe. Oh, no. And we can't properly fund our defence forces because the government's number one party is winning the next election. And they won't be able to do that by spending money on saving us from something that might happen in the future. They're banking on using what little money they can find to give us tax cuts in the hope that we will forget about everything they've done to us over the past 14 years. So we're exposed and not in a good way. Meanwhile, recruitment is as exactly as chaotic as you would expect. Fewer than one in ten applicants reportedly ended up joining the British Armed Forces last year because of long delays in the recruitment process. There's a line for everything in this country. 74,000 potential recruits of the 137,000 people who applied to join the Navy, the Army and the RAF gave up because the overall process took too long. It was also reported that the British Army, whose recruitment has been managed by Capita since 2012, had the worst problems and lost 70% of its potential recruits. What? Blimey. Capita. Is there anything in this country that is, is not run by Capita or G4S or Serco? I mean, why couldn't the actual military organise their own recruiting? They used to. But then the Tories got in and found something they hadn't already hived off. I mean, I suppose we should be grateful that they haven't privatised the army. Yet. It's just the recruitment bit. And it's going uh, uh, as well as much else that's been taken from us and gifted to private enterprise. Like the water companies and the railways and our gas and electricity. That seems to be the regime's speciality. Wrap a monopoly in a ribbon 
and give it away on the promise that it will be run better. And how's that working out? <sighs> Fabulous. As of this year, we have 130,000 fully trained and full-time military personnel, which is lower than at any time since the Napoleonic Wars, whenever that was. In the past 12 months, only 10,680 people have joined the UK regular armed forces, while 16,140 left. And in the past 10 years, eight hundred thousand applicants just gave up before being accepted because the wait was too long they were waiting six months without knowing if they'd been accepted or not and as usual the regime say that we should not believe the evidence of our own eyes the ministry of defense uh, stated recruitment is a top priority yeah, it's their number one priority. They're working night and day. It's the country's number one priority. It's my number one priority up and down the country, and that will be our focus. He's gripping it. And it's not like we don't need them. Ministers have been told that the current levels of recruitment were a profound national security risk. But as those ministers that haven't swanned off to Australia to promise something that we can't deliver are busy going around TV news shows hyperventilating about a tiny logo on the back of a football shirt. They can't do anything about that at the moment. So if Vlad the Insaner wouldn't mind postponing an invasion till we can get the England football kit recoloured, that would be just great. Thank you. We appreciate your cooperation. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Okie dokie. 0345 6060 973. Semra texts, the English flag isn't the only thing that's doubled. I got my count, well, not flag, you mean the, uh, the shirt. Doubled in price. I got my council tax this morning. It's doubled from £60 a month to £120 a month. When will our income double, says Semra? Uh, well, how's never for you? <laughs> I'll pencil you in for never on that. Glasgow, hello, Frankie. All right, Nick. How are you doing, pal? Good, yeah, good, thanks. A great man. I've not spoke to you for a while. I've been away on my travels. Oh, yeah. Prison. I was in bit of... No, no <laughs> come on. <laughs> you see, you're stereotyping like East End of Glasgow. No, 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 no. Not here Frankie. No. He must be in Berlin. Yeah, uh-huh. He, he must be in the big house. Right. <laughs> no, I was in Budapest in there for a while, and then in Croatia, and then in back to Croatia on Tuesday. Oh, well, I, that sounds a like, delight. I play, I play chess and win wee tournaments and stuff. And you play chess, and that's yeah, why I, you were away. Aye. You, you're a professional chess player. No, I'm not a professional chess player. I'm an amateur chess player, but oh, I right. play for good money. So it's a bit like you know, like you get poker players, amateur poker players, they go to tournaments and stuff and win money. So it's the same. Really? With chess. Aye. I find that See? hard to believe. What that you can make money at chess? Yeah. Oh, it's massive, Nick. Is it? Well, how, how much money are we talking about? Go on. Oh, come on, Nick. I, 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 I've got accountants and stuff. I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> Bodger might be listening in the tax yeah, policeman well, and exactly. get a donation to the yeah, Tory party, the, but uh, I'm no racist enough. The tax man, yeah. <laughs> the tax. Right, come on. OK, uh, so is it five figures? Oh, come on, Nick. He's a four. Big, no, 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 aye, four. Four like, figures. Four, four, and right. four, and four, okay. and four. You know what I mean? All right. Enough to get, keep the rules for the door. Well, good for and you. It's better so, because apparently it's been raining when I've been away. No. In Glasgow, I find that hard aye, to do. especially in Glasgow, mate. Aye. Right. Have uh, you any... Have you done the weather check for the night or the morning? Uh, well, I, I do. I'm, I'm supposed I, to begin at the morning. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't if I were you. I, I, I do the uh, the weather thing on uh, Fridays, but I, um, I can that. tell I'm you. Your Friday, man, but then you get back to us. Tomorrow, week. the sun is going to be out um, almost all day. Blimey! Oh, come on. No, but the wind's been horrendous. I would, so. uh, I would get out there and uh, enjoy it while it lasts, because it, because it won't. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. But anyway, Nick, what about the Donald? The <laughs> in Croatia, I was when I was in Zagreb, but um, and I'm going back to Zagreb on Tuesday. But <laughs> I was staying with my pal, and they, they're kind of it doesn't really care what what goes on here or goes on in America. Yeah, but they turned in and said that the the Donald's slogan was "Vote for Honest Don" and uh, <laughs> "Crooked" was a Crooked Joe. An honest done. Yeah. And I thought, nah, somebody's at the wind up. 
and they went, oh, and then a, a Google t- and it came up. Yeah, but apparently so. The slogan is going to be Honest Don versus yeah. Trickle Joe. Honest Don. Can you believe that? <laughs> I'm a person who wants to tell the truth. I'm an honest person. Yeah, he, he lied. He's an honest person. He lied. Yeah. And, and we've, had, we've had a lot, a lot of wind for the last few days. Do you know anybody that knows anything about wind? Because I, I don't. I don't know anybody who knows anything about wind. I know a lot about wind. Apart from him. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about wind. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you're just really? playing me. You're just playing me like a keyboard here, uh, Frankie. Oh, come no, I've just missed you down here. A little so bit. I'll need yeah. to try and learn to work. See, I don't want to phone you. I get the time difference mixed up because we're an hour in front. So sometimes when I've had too much Don Revy, I go back to my apartment and I'm like, right, I'm going back for ten o'clock, lads, because Nick Abbott's on, and I forget it's eleven o'clock and then and back here. And by the time you come on, I fell asleep. So. <laughs> I need to listen to the podcast. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, listen to the podcast. Excellent idea. I do. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, thanks for reminding me, Frankie. Uh, if you um, uh, like this show and you can't listen to all of it, then as uh, Frankie quite rightly pointed out, we put it up the internet as a podcast. Uh, we the idea is we take the news and the ads out. Now, if you have one of them stupid smart speakers, the magic phrase is "Play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast." And um, it's uh, available only on Global Player. It's exclusive to Global Player. If you haven't got that, then you can get it at your favourite app store or globalplayer.com. And the idea is that we take the news and most of the ads out, mostly, which means it takes less time to listen to. And uh, by that uh, method, you use less electricity and do your bit to protect the environment. All right. Thanks a lot, Frankie. Cheers, mate. 0345 Dai says, I have a complaint. You only like football? I like it only when it's uh, a World Cup. Snooker, on the other hand, is sublime. Invented by the British Army officers. It's your duty to adore it, or at least put up with it. Yes, yeah, snooker. I, I, can, I can force myself to get into it. When it first appeared on British TV, it uh, did appear as though it's, um, it's like going into a zen trance looking at snooker, because it's green, which is the easiest colour to look at, which is why blackboards used to be green, by the way. And it's got these little coloured balls on, and they go hither and thither and yon, and uh, nothing really happens, not very much, and you can just sort of go into um, into a bit of a trance. But it's such a waste of time, though. I mean, nothing really happens. Not really. Um, and I've, I, I, I start feeling a bit ill looking at the people who play it, because it, it appears to me as though they've never seen the light of day. Always in some dank basement somewhere, since they were kids. <laughs> they've got this sort of pallid, almost see-through look to them. They don't look well, let's be honest. Keith Tex, I agree with you, nobody outside the UK gives a damn. Stupid, washed-up little country. Whoa! <laughs> He's talking about us. Can you believe that? You have nothing the world wants to buy and soon you'll be completely in the dustbin of history, says Keith. Once the banks move out of London to Paris, your GDP will be the same as Iceland. Apologies to Iceland. Now, I don't know whether he's talking about the country or the shop. <laughs> I'm thinking about being offended, Keith. Junior texts, with all the fuss about the kit, not once was it mentioned during the England and Brazil game tonight. Really? They will spin it tomorrow. England would have beaten Brazil if they'd had the proper St George's Cross on their kit. Yes. Well, I've uh, I predicted that. Yes, they will. It, uh, those, um, those gay colours infested our boys and made them less manly. Something like that. I mean, they won't use the, that exact phrase, but that will be the inference... Speaking of inferences, I mean, I don't want to talk about it at all. I'm uh, going to respect uh, their privacy, but I was wondering how the press are going to make um, Kate's issue about Meghan. And it took them one day. If you look at the US home, or the, uh, just before I did, uh, just before I came on air, so they might have changed because they, they change it a lot. But if you look at the US home edition of Mail Online, the headline at the very top was, Kate doesn't need Megan, says expert. <laughs> so, so there it is. That, that's that uh, question answered. That's how they can make this about Megan. 
Yeah, thanks a lot, Megan. No! You see what you've done? 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nicka at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. You can WhatsApp us as well, by the way. I keep forgetting about that one. And the number is the same as the phone number. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. He is a very sick and dangerous man. Yeah, very sick, very dangerous. Caroline says, aesthetically speaking, the Union Jack is a mess. The St. George flag is marginally better, but still an improvement on the awful Nike version, which looks like a train seat pattern. <laughs> well, yeah, a little bit. Ed says, it disgusts me. The very people who care so much about the St. George flag are the ones who care the least about the British people who find themselves at the mercy of an evil government. And Ben says, what is wrong with insisting on the flag being as it has been for a long time? But because, uh, Ben, it, it, it has been changed over and over and over again. For uh, at least two political parties that I can think of off the top of my head, the uh, Tories and UKIP, they've changed it. Uh, we changed it for the last Olympics. It's been changed multiple times for football kits. Uh, there was the, uh, the one that was just absolutely festooned with different coloured crosses that was in the papers today. There was the Umbro one, which made it all in uh, red. The police have got a black one with a blue line through it for the fallen uh, comrades, and it's been changed over and over and over again. But only now do the, uh, the, 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 the woke warriors have, uh, get really upset about it. Curious. Very, very odd. And I, like I said yesterday, I know what it's about. New Malden, Ahmed. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I've got two, two points to uh, comment on today. Yeah. Firstly, is um, uh, this lot in uh, the running the country of the moon, which planet are they living on? <laughs> in what respect? Well, apparently, according to our so-called Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, uh, people living in Surrey... Uh, finding it hard to live on a salary of hundred thousand pounds. Yeah, he said that uh, in his constitu- up his manner, that a hundred oh. grand a year isn't that much. It yeah, isn't well, that much. Well, of course he thinks that because in a room he would usually be the poorest person in that room because they, he and the people like him like to surround themselves with people who have got way more money than they do. Uh, but for the rest of us poor dopes who pay taxes, it's a vast amount that, that people couldn't even dream of earning a six-figure sum. Well, most people are on about, it used to be, average salary used to be about 26000 Now, apparently, mm. it's about thirty two or 33000 Yes, and you know what? I don't believe that. I've, I've heard that yeah. over and over again. This is the story. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, said that he, uh, it was about uh, the, th- the threshold of people claiming child ca- care which uh, mm. he wants to extend past 100 grand a year. Um, and then they say the, uh, the average wage is, uh, let me see, where is it? 34,963, so let's say 35,000 pounds. But that's not true. It may it's be true, true. With, some, with one uh, way of figuring out averages, but yes. if you do that, then there's that old story of uh, you know, people in a pub, they earn, let's say, £30,000 on average if you add them all up and then divide by the number yes. of people in a pub. But if Bill Indeed. Gates walks into that pub and you calculate the average by the same way, they're all millionaires. 
they but, will but be they billionaires. aren't, of course. Yeah, so yeah. that 35,000, that, that average, supposed average for people in this country, is made, is, is skewed by a small number of people earning a vast amount of money. I think that if you go outside London, outside the wealthier enclaves of the southeast, and talk to actual real, real people, the average wage is, if they're lucky, 25 grand. 25, 26 maybe, yes. Now the thing is, all this uh, cost of living uh, hardship is due to their uh, performance or yeah. uh, incompetence of last three, four years, especially last three, four years. Well, the last 14 years, you might well, say. Well, 14 years, yes, but uh, especially, you know, they have now made us uh, uh, sort of, uh, how, what, what one should say, uh, we are, we now, taxpayer will have to now pay almost half a trillion pounds. The taxpayer's going to have to pay half a trillion pounds? What, each? <laughs> I don't think well, I can manage not that. Each, but <laughs> apparently it's $500 billion they, uh, they used on um, this uh, furlough schemes, like mm. that, and also these uh, all fraud... Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, contract they uh, handed over to phony the PPE contracts. They're made. Yes, PPE contracts, right. yes. etc. I mean, now the taxpayer will be paying off those debts in, for the next seventy years. No, oh, forever. So we'll, we'll never pay it off. We we we'll barely pay the interest. Well. I won't be around, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the easy way out, Ahmed. That's, yeah. And, you know, I mean, these guys, they're coming up with all sorts of, you know, crazy ideas. I mean, this uh, um, uh, deal with, uh, uh, trade deal with Australia oh. and so on, what... Well, it's, it's worse than that. They, you've got Kemi Badenoff, who's um, gallivanting around the world at our expense, signing meaningless deals with American just, states, like memorandums of understanding. And you know what that means? Nothing <laughs> at all. At all. Zero. Indeed. indeed. Yeah. Now, also, just, on, uh, just to uh, finish off, um, can I just say that um, uh, very sorry to hear um, Princess of Wales, Catherine, uh, obviously now has disclosed that she is suffering from uh, cancer. Yeah. And hopefully this is all. But, you know, what about the media? All the media, I'm, I'm sorry, everyone, all the presenters, even some on LBC as well, they have just been highlighting, just keep talking about a wall-to-wall -wall coverage <laughs> about conspiracies and so on. Mm. Well, are they now satisfied? Now, she has said, and also about the, the damn photo with children. I mean, so, and she said uh, she did it. She experimented it. So what? It's a big deal. Well, well so what now? But before, people were uh, curious as to what the hell was going on. Yeah, I mean, you, you, but they, if they had known then what they know now, then they probably wouldn't have said it. But I think, again, I, I think that um, even discussing it is uh, transgressing the rules because uh, the family, understandably, wants to be left alone. And the, well, so indeed. Keeping indeed. turfing it over is not leaving them alone, is it? It's not, indeed. And they have caused a lot of, uh, I think, hurt. And, uh, you know, it's not on. I think, uh, especially in, uh, the Sun newspaper, I think there will be... Um, uh, uh, I think they will be uh, investigated. Yeah, well, I, I very much doubt that any of the above will uh, will happen, and um, the, the press are busy pointing fingers at anybody that they can find to, to kind of take the heat off themselves because uh, they are guilty of what they're accusing other people of doing. But, but I as I, I as I said before, I don't really want to talk about this. Because apart well, from indeed. anything else, I, I looked up the figures. According to the yeah. NHS own website, one in two people in this country will get cancer. Yeah. So, you know, it is, it, people are talking about it like it, she's the first person to ever fall uh, to this disease or uh, to ever um, uh, develop it. Half of us are going to. Anyway, I mean, like I said, don't want to talk about it. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Yvonne says, you often mention the power of the boycott. Maybe you might spare a sentence on who he was and what part he played in his name becoming part of our language. Looking forward to hearing some kind of answer. 
Well, <laughs> I would help you out there, uh, Yvonne, but I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Maybe I read it wrong. You often mention the power of the boycott. Well, I, I don't. I have mentioned in the past that the internet could be used for good things, like if a company uh, strays over the line and you think that, uh, you know, like an oil company, for instance, it uh, ruins some uh, beautiful area in a foreign place and the people there don't have water to drink anymore and, they, and the land has been uh, ruined and can't produce crops and so on and refuse to clean it up, then you might think ill of that company. And the way that you could use the internet would be to, uh, you know, suggest that you might, instead of filling up at one station, just drive 100 yards down the road and fill up at another one. And if everybody did that, then some giant oil company that was worth billions of dollars would be put out of business. That would be a good way of using the internet rather than to whip up some f uh, f phony storm about a blooming football shirt. But generally, I, I'm, I wouldn't support boycotts. But anyway, she says, uh, maybe you might spare a sentence on who he was and what part he played in his name becoming part of our language. W what's she talking about? Do you know? Oh, sorry, who? <laughs> sorry, I got around you here. Apologies, mate. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I, c I can't, I don't have the energy to uh, repeat it. But I don't know who you're talking about, Yvonne. If only I did, I might help. But as I don't, I can't. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> uh, Jonathan says, wake up, everybody. The flag on the back of the England shirt is a trans flag to represent the gay footballers. Yeah, well, apparently there aren't any, Jonathan. Tristan says, I think he's joking, by the way. Don't get upset. Tristan says, I, I went to the Willy Wonka experience. I turned up after being promised magic, wonder and joy. In reality, it was a lackluster and joyless experience where everyone looked more sad and dejected rather than happy to be uh, speaking of football. Rather than happy to be speaking of football. Do you... <laughs> There's supposed to be a full stop there somewhere, surely. Hey, Tristan, can I interest you in a full stop? He says, speaking of football, do you remember who made the ball in 1966? I bet you won't guess if I gave you the rest of the show there. This must be what Brexit voters feel like. I blame Hazard and Sparkles. Blimey, you're all over the shop there, Tristan. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Who, ma who made the ball in 1966? Was it uh, Dave? <laughs> uh, what company, you mean? Um, no. I'm just going to have a wild stab in the dark. I'll say Umbro. No idea. Let's see now. Um, Ranjit. Yes, sir. Not ready. 0345 606. That's like forthcoming attractions. It wasn't quite prepared, which is unusual. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. 0345 6060 973. By the way, the answer is Slazenger. Slazenger. Rick says, we've lost every match since the new kit was released. What does that tell you? <laughs> well, that's, that is just true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Oldbury, Ranjit. How are you, Nick? You're all right. Yes, sir. Good, thanks. You've had nearly as much mileage with this shirt story as you did with um, tell us something that the Tories done, which is better now uh, than before. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't get anywhere with that one, but um, I think we've no. uh, dealt with the uh, shirt issue in its entirety. Yeah, I've sent you a WhatsApp of, of the German shirt as well. Oh, yeah, I've Somebody seen that. Yeah, it was, uh, I've seen it, yeah. It was yeah, pink. It's quite funny, yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about what Jeremy Hunt has said. And most of the day on, you know, LBC, people are trying to figure out, is there any way back for the Tories? Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly what I said last night. They're so patronising, yeah? Jeremy Hunt's got the audacity to say that a £100,000 salary a year doesn't go far enough and is not enough, yeah? Yes. I've got three, I've got three children. All of them are graduates. And I, I think one of them, he's got a good job in IT, and I think he's on about 40. 
And the other two, I've got one. One's got a two-one degree in law. And the other one's got a two-one in business management. Are on under twenty-five thousand pound a year yeah. each. I, I, so I no think that correct, correct. I, I think that that average thing is uh, is fake news. It's only the average thirty five thousand pound a year. It's only the average mm. if you work it out in the in in the way that puts it in the best possible light. I think the real average is at least ten grand off that. Yeah, I think you know. I think if you're earning between fifteen and twenty thousand pound a year, right. Well, 19,000 is a minimum wage, isn't it? And I think that's what the majority of the population of this country are on. The most right? numerous, it's, yes. I mean, you could work numerous. the average out where you put everybody's uh, earnings in and then divide yeah. by the number of people, but that just skews it high because there's a few people who are earning millions. Uh, like your analogy you always use about Bill Gates walking into your yeah. pub, yeah? Right. Okay. And the other story I want to pick up is about joining the army or the forces, yeah? Mm. Now, you, you know, you get a prospectus if you're going to go to university or whatever. The prospectus for joining the army is, right, that when you leave, you may be homeless, right? <laughs> I remember in the 1991 first Gulf War, reading in the paper, that squaddies were in Iraq, yeah? And their wives were having to phone them, saying, listen, we're going to get evicted because we can't pay the poll tax. Right. Under the Tory government. So you're supposed to serve your queen and country, prepare to die, and you've got to worry about your family being evicted out your house. Yes. I mean, as right? I, the figures are something like over half of those in the army are dissatisfied with their accommodation, which is just mm. not good enough. I mean, there is a contract that you sign with people who are willing to put their life on the line for our country. And that should be that we take care of you to your complete satisfaction from now until the end of time. But we don't agree to that part of it. We we would have them risk their lives for us, but uh, mm. if they want anything back for it, other than the absolute minimum that we can uh, get away with, well, you know, we're not we're not remotely interested. I think that's pretty pretty dreadful, really. I mean, you know, the, these um, asylum seekers. I mean, them turning their noses at uh, you know going into these army camps, right, where they're going to be in prison. Yeah. You know, that just says it all. But if you go to America, oh, and you know the squad is in that, yeah. they, they, they're respected wherever they go. Uh, completely, you know? so, yeah. so they, I mean, here, if, if you went around London or, or in Birmingham and asked some of the guys who were homeless, say, what was your last job? And they say, we was in the army. Uh, I, work, I we were, bet you would get quite a few people who said just that, yeah. Yeah, and I used to work with quite a few guys who who were ex-army, and they said, you know what, we don't like civilian life because when we was in the army, this is like, these guys probably about 17 now, because we used to be treated okay, but now they treat them like rubbish, right? And the thing is, these, like Jeremy Hunt, yeah, you've got to be careful how you pronounce his name, because yes. if you're getting mm -hmm. angry, you can you slip do. up, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? He, he, all of these are so out of touch, all right? And that's the reason they're going to lose this next general election, because they've become so elitist, But that, right? no, that, that, that's just, that's not true. They haven't become so elitist. They were always like this. What's extraordinary to me is that the uh, people who are poor and who ha mm -hmm. are being kept down by this mm -hmm. party keep voting for them and th if mm -hmm. you point this out to them then their response will be almost like they've been programmed uh, that, well that's just the politics of envy as though yeah. it, as though it's not I affecting was, uh, them Nick, Nick, i was having an argument with somebody the other day right i said more billionaires and millionaires were created during the pandemic and since the pandemic yeah. because of these contracts guess what his reply was go on well, since 1994, since the lottery started, quite a few millionaires have been created <laughs> since then. Oh, so, you know, uh, I said, I'm banging my head against the wall, even trying to explain yeah. some of it to you. I would, um, it, it, I, would, I would take away half of his chips, if I were you, just throw them on the floor. <laughs> no, but that's what, no, but that is a mentality of people that I try to educate, and I think you're trying to educate, and one or two other presenters no. on this station are. I am not. I am not an educator. Not now. Not ever. Never. <laughs> no, but we're trying to explain to them how they're being shafted and there's, they can't understand it. No, they're, but they're, there's. It's. It's not a willingness. It's not uh, that they're unwilling to learn. It's that they're unwilling to change their their, their sort of received views. Because yeah, to do so would be to admit that they've been had and there's too much loss of face involved. 
Well, well, you know when you can't pay your mortgage, right? You can't provide uh, food for your children, yeah? I think then it's time to admit, hang on, maybe there's something wrong. No, you know? it's, it's but probably you, almost... Can you skip up a little to one side? Yeah, it's almost certainly Jeremy Corbyn's or Meghan Markle's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those are, are their fault, no doubt about it. Ryan's here, I've got to go. Uh, Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Um, where was I? Uh, Dave says, the best sequel ever is uh, Magnificent Seven. Although, to be honest, I have yet to see Magnificent One, Two, Three, Four, Five, or Six. A listener with material. Oh, no. Ed says, did you notice this week that President Obama... What? <laughs> okay, President Obama visited to Sunak at number 10. Apparently, Elon Musk sent him to inform that Sunak that he had failed the interview and hadn't got the job but that his CV will be kept on file and should an opportunity arise, uh, then uh, he will be, uh, they'll, they'll give him notice. Alex says, The Empire Strikes Back and The Dark Knight are both better sequels than Terminator 2. No, 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 no. No. That is not true. The Empire Strikes Back, I mean, people do talk about that as though it's one of the greatest films ever made, but it, it really isn't. There's a, there was only a couple of scenes in that that were any good. I mean, there was the the walkers thing, whatever they're called, the like the four-legged walker things, and he tied them up in uh, knots and one of them fell over. That was excellent. Other than that, not much. The first one was by far the best, and the first one was, of course, with the, uh, was the fourth one. Episode four was the first one. It's very, very... Uh, it's, it's almost like we're in a Marx Brothers sketch now. The party of the first part. <sighs> Uh, as for the worst, uh, says Alex, Ghostbusters 2 and all of the Jaws sequels are my entries. Well, Ghostbusters 1 was bad enough. I'm not going to watch 2. And uh, I, I would believe you about the Jaws things. Christian says, have you heard about the customs warehouse in Portsmouth built to handle imports post-freedom? <laughs> freedom, yeah. How's that freedom working out? Dreadful. Yeah, not, not that great. Not as advertised, certainly. Uh, these uh, warehouses at a cost of £7 million to the Portsmouth Council. Since the government policy has changed five times since 2020, it has not been used and now will not be needed, and, most th and the most cost-effective solution is to demolish it. Yeah. I thought it was significantly more than £7 million. But yes, they, they built them and then uh, decided that they didn't need them, and now they're going to knock them down again. It's, uh, it's the government way. They're very, very concerned about uh, not wasting the public purse. <laughs> Yeah, it's their top priority. And uh, Joe says, uh, completely wrong, the best sequel ever was Bad Boys 2. <laughs> I very much doubt that. I mean, I don't know, but I doubt it. Dave says, we don't need an army, we have loads of sovereignty that we can chuck at the enemy. If that doesn't work, we can unleash the cross. Well, that is, yeah, but we'll have to change the colour on it. Not, not that, uh, you know, not the colour that it is at the moment. Because uh, Vladimir Putin ain't going to be frightened of that, that's for sure. 0345 Tunbridge Wells. Um, Bob. Hello, Nick. Bob. I was about to say he's going to have a present and it doesn't sit on the fence. And a lot of people, you talk about things and they sort of uh, divert and they don't want to actually, you know, say what, what the actual truth is. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of a lot about the flag. I mean, I don't see why... Why do things have to be changed when it, it's not broken? You know? Because they, th things have always been changed. You, you can't no, stay but, the same because then you don't what? go anywhere. Flag, but it represents it represents England. It's like any flag, whether it's American or whatever. America, that's mm. what the flag has been. Right. And why are people... It's always the minority about anything that's done that caused the problems. Always these woke people are well because of this... There's no problem with it. It's like VAI in football. There's no problem with football. There was, you know, I'm just using that as another example. Why <laughs> VAR. Well, no, there, there was the, right, but there was the problem that uh, if it, if somebody was offside or not, they 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 no, might have got the wrong decision, and the game might have gone the wrong way. But referee, yeah, but they they still making their, their, those mistakes now, even when they're using it. It hasn't been solved. Look, well, I think the offside. Error. I think the offside thing has been solved pretty much. I mean, there, there hasn't been any saying, glaring errors error, about the offside. Yeah, human error. Is, human error is, is is natural. It just happens. You know, yeah. they, they don't always get it. Bob, right. if it's if you want a world where nothing changes, then I'm afraid it does not and know, has not ever no, existed. Have, we have to progress, and things do change. Right. But when there's nothing wrong with something, and it's fine, 
why create a problem? But it's not, it's not a problem unless people with nothing better to do make a, de make a big no. deal out of okay. it. It's just a blooming but, cross, which, which yes. by the way, you would never have noticed had not the press blown this up and, uh, and various purple-faced... It, it would have been noticed. The pro uh, it was so it, small, it, it, you would not have noticed it. And, oh, and right. it's, it's been out for a while, then. and, uh, and yes. it, it had flown off the shelves, and nobody said a blind word about it, apart from that it cost £124.99. All right. Exactly. But look at it this way. The majority is, is, the, is the major outcome in, in anything you do in life. It's democracy. OK? The majority has a say. That's the way it is. You vote for a party, the majority, that's the way it is. Yeah. What's that going to do with it's, the cross? Because the majority of people don't want it. If, if No, if no, Bob. On the radio, no, no, Bob. You don't want it. You cannot no, speak, I've, for, I've, you I've cannot been, speak for the majority. Please don't tell me that everybody no, no, you've, I mean is, you've asked the thinks I've like you. I've listened to on the radio and the TV right, uh, right. that talked about it. 90% yes. of them I've listened to don't want it. Of course, case. because they're complaining. People don't ring up to say that they do, that they like something. They, they ring up to say that they don't like something. When have you ever contacted a company? to say, uh, thanks very much for your excellent product. Never. People contact companies to say, we hate your product, and it did not perform as uh, advertised, and I want my money back. That's just human nature, Bob. I'm so over people saying that everything should stay the same, like, uh, like uh, the world should just uh, remain in aspic. It's just absolute nonsense. It's a cross for crying out loud. It's not going to um, uh, affect your masculinity one way or another, Bob. Don't worry about it. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. So it's worse than the flag thing because the Victoria and Albert Museum, have you heard about this? The Victoria and Albert Museum has rowed back on its labelling of Margaret Thatcher as a contemporary villain in one of its displays after a backlash from the same people who exploded over the cross on the back of a football shirt and created a hot air cloud that is threatening to melt a glacier. Except that sounds like the result of climate change, and they're angry about that too, so you can't say that. It was hard to find anything that the usual suspects aren't angry about. I mean, it's a list that includes everything, except the things that they should really be irate at, which is that the party they keep voting for is keeping them poor while distracting them with this nonsense. Hey, sheeple! Wake up, it's later than you think. So the Victoria and Albert Museum was met with eye-bulging, fist-clenched, shouting fury after it described uh, Margaret Thatcher as an unpopular public figure. What? <laughs> well, that's just a matter of fact. If you were a youth when she was in power, then you cannot say her name without pronouncing it Margaret Thatcher. And not only did the V&A call Thatcher unpopular, they also made fun of her. And that's about as bad as uh, can be to uh, the uh, permanently furious. They absolutely cannot stand being giggled at. <laughs> because the museum included Margaret Thatcher alongside, get ready, grip onto something firm, Hitler and Osama bin Laden as part of a history of comedy display. That's right, a history of comedy. Comedy is making people furious now. <sighs> Fabulous. I mean, not Jim Davison or Bernard Manning type comedy, the type of 1970s comedy that laughed at minorities, punching down comedy. That's just free speech, that is. I mean, those people being laughed at need to get a sense of humour or go back to where they came from. No, laughing at the powerful seems to make certain types completely lose their minds. I mean, take the mick out of... Jacob Rees-Mogg, for instance. My view. And uh, a certain uh, type of person will want to burst out of their uh, decrepit hovel and kill you. Politics of envy, that is. And Margaret Thatcher is their god. She's like a vision of perfection sent down from heaven to the kind of person that has done miserably badly from absolutely everything she didn't stood for. It's a constant source of amazement to me that the poor defend those who keep them down. How would Donald Trump put it? I love the poorly educated. And the VNA is one of our most revered institutions, famed throughout the world for its collections and always in the list of top attractions for tourists to see when they come here. But we know what this government would have done to our greatest uh, institutions because they've done it already. 
those that haven't uh, they haven't dismantled are in they're in the process of selling off or filling the board with their cronies. But you know this is culture. So the culture secretary leapt to the museum's defence. No, of course she didn't, because she's not the culture secretary. She's the culture war secretary. Lucy Fraser is who it is. She blasted the V&A for its inappropriate wording. Here's the wording. Keep in mind, this is part of an exhibition called Laughing Matters, which tells the story of British satire and comedy through the ages. And in that show about comedy, there is a case devoted to Punch and Judy. And the caption reads, or rather read, over the years, the evil character in this seaside puppet show has shifted from the devil to unpopular public figures including Adolf Hitler, Margaret Thatcher and Osama bin Laden to offer contemporary villains. Which is true. I mean, it's not saying that Margaret Thatcher is Hitler or that she's as bad as Osama bin Laden, just that she was used as a comedy device in a puppet-based amusement. That's just a fact. But reporting facts is, these days, also known as rewriting history. These days, the only history that is acceptable is propaganda. These days, history must teach us that Britain has never done anything even remotely wrong, ever. And anyone who says otherwise is a traitor. These days, no right-wing leader ever did the country anything other than good and anyone who disagrees with that is an enemy of the people. And any institution, be it the National Trust or the Royal Horticultural Society or the British Museum or our theatres or TV stations, especially the BB Bloomin' C, Boo! or absolutely any organisation that dares to tell the truth about the country and its past, must be smashed into little pieces, set on fire and sunk. And so, with wearying predictability, people are now calling for the Victoria and Albert Museum to be defunded. Yeah, of course they are. One of the jewels in our nation's crown, one of the most respected and revered museums in the world, should now be shut down, say the permanently furious, who will go through their entire lives without straying through its doors. You know, in case they accidentally learn something. People who care about nothing other than this perpetual war with the woke, who desire nothing more than upsetting the libs, regardless of how it affects themselves. Just as long as the other side loses, they don't care if they lose too. And who won the Battle of the Boers? Well, they did, naturally, because the VNA has now said that it recognises the wording was open to misinterpretation and confirmed that it had changed the description. The new rewording states of the history of Punch and Judy puppets. The characters have since been recast to reflect figures in the public eye, from Adolf Hitler during wartime to Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s being portrayed as villains, to more recently Nick Clegg as the clown and Simon, Simon Cowell as the judge. And if they think that that's going to satisfy the trolls who inhabit the dark corners of the comments sections of the newspapers and the actual members of the ruling party who have apparently got nothing better to do with their time that we pay them for because all problems in this land have been fixed then they've got another thing coming i mean ian duncan smith weighed in he said they must live in a bubble far away from the real world to think it's rational to propose that a politician of the stature of margaret thatcher would equate to any of those mass murderers and vile human beings what, Nick Clegg? <laughs> he, said, he said, this sort of idiocy begs the question about government funding. Nutshelled, Ian Middlename Smith, this sort of idiocy begs the question about government funding. Not for the V&A, but for this government. Full of superficial non-entities found at the very bottom of the barrel. Each new minister incredibly worse than the last. Isn't that right, Liz? Absolutely. Ain't that right, Budge? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 and because of this confected outrage, the VNA confirmed that it had reviewed and updated the label. They said in response to some concerns around a caption in the Punch and Judy case of our Laughing Matters display. I mean, ironic that it's a, it's a display about comedy. 
This display, which looks at Britishness through the lens of comedy, we have reviewed the label text which relates to public figures who, in recent history, have been characterised as villains in Punch and Judy shows. They said, we do appreciate that the original wording was open to misinterpretation and have updated it. Well, it wasn't open to misinterpretation. It was an open goal to those who wanted to misinterpret it. Because being angry is their defining characteristic. I mean, you might remember that Margaret Thatcher was the old bat with the mad staring eyes who smoked cigars, went on seal culling holidays, and had her cabinet of dopes call her sir, and hit them with rulers in a little thing called spitting image. Where was the fury about that? There wasn't any, because it wasn't in the museum where lefties go. And the thing that gets me about this ridiculous wailing about the football shirt is that tough guy right-wingers say that that's the sort of thing that threatens our national identity. And if our national identity is really so weak, so delicate and prone to damage, then it's not worth protecting. I would have thought that our national identity could withstand a bit of a prod. I'd think it pretty unpatriotic to say otherwise. But what do I know? Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! <laughs> well, that's that. That's also a fact. Orpington. Hello, Tony. Hi, Nick. Tony. Now, since you spoke to your last call, I've got three things here, but I'm going to speak to you the first one about... Um, what I called up for. Okay. And that is to do with sneezing. Sneezing? Isn't it the best feeling ever? It really is, yes. It is, yes. I, I totally agree. And I've got my friends, sometimes you can get like a um, little bit of a tissue, roll it up, and it, they say it's a seventh of an orgasm. A seventh. <laughs> no, apparently so. Right. But I, when I get a sneeze, you know the ones that, you know, the hay fever's coming now and yeah. sometimes it doesn't? Right. It's such a lovely thing. I, that's what I've rung up It for really is. Time. Yeah, don't hold it in, though, because it, it, if you try to hold a sneeze in, then there mm. is the danger that your eyeballs will actually pop, <laughs> pop right out of your skull. That's a fact. Yes. And we haven't got the wind coming from America, have we? We haven't got the wind. No. I don't know what that means, but no. Uh, no just come, let... Just, about wind. You just yeah. have to really get behind a sneeze and just let it out. 100%. And yeah. um, that's why you've done it a couple of times. I know what goes on in that studio, but I've had it a few times where I live. And um, it, a lot of people don't like it, but I think they are in denial because when I sneeze, and when I heard you sneeze, I think it was the week before last, mm. and... Yeah, I don't understand because um, it's a great feeling. It's, the, it's the absolute most fun I've ever had with my clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> That's just true. Okay. Yeah, and there's, since you spoke to your last one, I'm going to leave him third, but you mentioned Jim Davidson. Yes. I only like him because he's a Charlton Athletic fan. Okay. Um, and the first one is um, I'm a football referee, a qualified top, um, well, not top level, but uh, senior county football referee. Is and you mentioned about BAI right? and I turned off. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Ken F.A. Um, but I, I don't know what he was talking about, but you defended us, and I appreciate it. Right, so what, what's your opinion of um, uh, of VAR? And should it be extended to um, to, to decide on other things? Or has it gone too no, far? So should it just I, be I concentrating with, on offside? I agree. I think we're losing um, the assistant ref or we're called linesman, assistant referees. I think we will lose that eventually, unfortunately. Right. Um but I think that should go now. And um, uh, Graham Pohl was a very good referee, in my opinion. Um, and he was all for it. But I think he's now not for it. So, but the thing is, I, I mean, there are not, not in the great scheme of things, not many. But there are some important matches that have gone the wrong way yeah. because of a, 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 the wrong decision on the field. Which, And, and I know yeah. it, um, it, it inserts a, a pause in the action, which is not what football is about. I mean, thank... Thankfully, that game is not like the American sports, for instance, like American football and uh, baseball mm -hmm. and that, which is like two seconds of uh, 
about activity and then they stand around and talk about it for 10 minutes. It's not like that. That's that's the beauty of the game. And so it has Absolutely. it has created so, uh, like a hiccup every now and again. But would Absolutely. you not prefer that and then get the right decision? No. I, 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 no, I, I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I'm not... Uh, look, I know I know a couple of high-level referees who are up that, that, that level. Mm. I never made that because my fitness let me down and stuff right. like that. But I'm not sure if they're a fan of it. And in this country especially, Europe seems to be dealing with this better. Right. That is a known fact. We've had uh, um, Howard Webb, who's in charge now, thank God. We've lost Mike Riley, and um, things are starting to go in the right direction with okay. regards to diversity and stuff like that. But um, for me personally, uh, I'm unsure about it. But right. I you're, didn't like you, you. You're on the yeah. fence. Okay. I am on the fence. I don't want to be, but I quite liked it when I was going to Charlton Athletic when they, they were in the Premier League and stuff like that with my mum. And I don't think things have got better, to be honest. That's my opinion. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people think that things were better when they were young, but that's because they, their knees worked and they didn't groan when they got up. Thanks a lot, Tony. 0345 6060 973. Ed says, as an oldie, I would gladly join the army, except the modern uniform is terribly unbecoming. If they reverted back to Victorian scarlet coat and tails, I would look delightful in a tin top hat with a rifle to lean on as I tally-ho ahead. Uh, where would I put the bayonet, says Ed. Well, I've got a suggestion for you, Ed. Roger says, I'm a white middle-aged man and I'm thinking of leaving this uh, sinking country and applying for asylum in Rwanda. Do you think I would be eligible? Well, it depends what you've done. And Belinda says, can you please tell me why you emphasise the word mostly? I've started to do it now, and people ask me why I say it like that, and I've got no idea, says, Bel <laughs> says Belinda. It's, uh, it's from Aliens 2. I mean, talking as we were a while ago about sequels. Aliens 2 is not as good. I, was, I mean, it's a totally different film. It's like full-on action movie, the Aliens, Aliens, as they call it. Uh, whereas Alien is like the sort of ghost in the house kind of film. So it's completely different. And I would say that uh, Aliens is not better than Alien. It's the same director as did Terminator 2, which is, of course, way better than Terminator. And I'd say is the best sequel ever made. It's also... With the possible... There's only one film I'd say that's a better action movie... Possibly. Depends on which day you ask me, but it's the um, Thunder Road, the um, the Australian Mad Max thing, Mad Max Thunder Road, which is just absolutely epic. But um, in Aliens, the little girl who's managed to survive on her own in this uh, compound with the, uh, the ravenous alien monsters running about, she tells Ripley... Um, that uh, they mostly come out at night. Mostly. That's why I do it. And that's why you do it too, Belinda. Now you know. Let's have um, Portugal. Mark. Oh, Nick. Hi, man. Can you hear me properly? Yes, go ahead. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I often have things about um, the first films and the second films. I've forgotten them all right now. Um, the... Um, I called originally to talk about a single political question, but while I was waiting, I realised I was in the bar tonight, and I was watching the England football, England Brazil football team in the bath in in, in Portugal in, in the, the bar in the bath open, just so I could watch. Oh, it the much. bar! Right, that yeah, makes the, more sense. I was in the bar. In the bar. I was in the bar, and and um, I didn't notice this damn flag. No. Everyone's talking about for the last uh, week. Yes. Uh, I didn't notice anything about No, this, it's this. very, very, very small, and it's on the back of their shirt. Well, I didn't even notice it. I'm looking at the football. I'm watching it. Yes. Some stupid lapel thing. Correct. The, 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 the original question I had was, um, I'm obviously, I flip between Portugal and England, and I don't keep up with all the news. There was a thing last year about whether MPs should be... Um, um, asking the questions, or they should be being asked. You know about these these new t television channels. 
there, there was a, uh, an inquiry into it, whether MPs should be allowed oh, yeah, to yeah, ask yeah, the right, question yeah, that yeah. been asked. Mm. What happened about that, Nick? Where did that go? <laughs> what, what was the answer for that? It didn't go anywhere. Uh, absolutely nothing has happened uh, uh, whatsoever, as far as I'm aware. No. Well, you're my oracle, man. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I think you've uh, you've chosen the, uh, the the wrong subject there. No. So, okay, so nothing's happened all right. at so all. Can, no. Yeah. So you yeah. Carry on as you okay. were. How did we do with the? Uh, how how did the game go tonight? I mean, I know we lost, but did we uh, cover ourselves in uh, glory or uh, or not? Oh. No. Same I've old. been so divorced from I've been so divorced from <clears throat> football since I've been here in Portugal because I won't pay for a VPN, I won't pay for a um, a sports channel. So mm. it's <clears throat> you know I only see it when it's on the on the telly in the, in the bar. In the bar, right? And, you know, and there's always yeah. other things to. I don't even, uh, even know half the players nowadays. Right? Because you know, I'm, I'm like four years out of date. Yes. So. Well, um, I'm sure that uh, the information is available on an internet. Do you get the internet in Portugal? <laughs> I do, yeah, but I ain't got time for you that. You haven't got time no, for that, no. Very, very busy person. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. 0345 973 Bev says, with reference to all this fuss over the flag, the phrase that comes to mind is patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. Seems to fit with all the people who are up in arms about it, says Bev. Correct mundo, Bev. That's right. Edward says, did you mention Jeremy Hunt? Far be it from me to correct you. He is not the Chancellor, he is a Chancer. <laughs> well, that may be a statement of fact. And Caroline says they should just write Fury as on the back of the shirts in big red capital letters. Yeah, Fury as England get knocked out in the quarterfinals again. <laughs> And John says, this, uh, the, 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 I guess I'll put this on Twitter. No, m well, maybe not. It's just kind of offensive. It says, the, the England shirt they all want. It's a picture of um, a riot, essentially. <laughs> Enormously fat England players, or England uh, supporters, whose uh, replica kit barely covers their vast stomachs, who are on the rampage. Uh, you may well be right about that, John. Is that Lee on the front? He's contacting his lawyers as we speak. 0345 6060 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's Conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. Hello, boys. 0345 6060 973. Nick text, Return of the Jedi is the best. Stop being wrong tonight. These are the facts. Now, was Return of the Jedi the second one they made or the third one they made? Because the third one they made was abysmal. It was just Muppets in Space. I hate that film. The second one was okay, but it wasn't as good as the first one. And for an updated version of that, you want to watch the uh, the, the new Tom Cruise um, Top Gun film, because it's the exact same film. Pretty much exactly the same. It's like they put some tracing paper over Star Wars and uh, just uh, copied it out and stuck t uh, Tom Cruise in it. But it's very, very good. Um, Craig says, you are wrong. People don't just contact companies to complain. I recently had lunch in the Savoy Hotel River Bar, and I wrote them a letter the following day to compliment them on the food staff and the experience, says Craig. Yeah, well, did you compliment them about the price? <laughs> I bet it cost you £300. I bet it was £300 for lunch. Something of that uh, order, I bet. The fancy schmancy people we've got listening to this show. Croydon, hello, Donald. Yes, hello. Donald. Hiya. Uh, yeah, great show. Um, yes, I just wanted to, to uh, bring something to your attention. Um, uh, well, I've always grown up thinking um, that the that voting was private. Um, you know, uh, nobody knew what who we vote for. Yeah, nobody knows what you get in, what you get up to in that plywood booth. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. But, uh, 
on my last visit, or last but one, yeah. um, I, I remember going into the, uh, the, uh, the station or the church, whatever, mm. and um, I got the uh, voting slip. Uh, for some reason, I, I, I turned over the, the, the voting slip, yeah. and it had, like, a load of numbers on the back. Right. Uh, and so I asked the fella um, what these numbers were all about, and uh, he was a bit evasive, uh, but I managed to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> I managed to, um, uh, yeah, uh, torture it out of him. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, in the end, I asked him, "Can these numbers be traced back to me?" Mm. And he said, "Yes." Yeah. So therefore, yeah, uh, it's not exactly private, then, is it, Donald? It's all gone down on your permanent record. As I long mean, as long as you haven't voted for the wrong party. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be just fine. <laughs> I mean, that's not right, is it? Surely. Well, it uh, don't uh, don't make no sense to me. And what do they do with the slips after you voted? Do they store them away or what? Well, they make sure that they know where you live the, because they might have to come and uh, you know contact you in the middle of the night. Yeah, so they can actually analyse it. This person lives at that address and they yeah. voted this way or that way. Right. I mean, it's, it's not private at all, is it, really? Well, it doesn't sound private the way you're describing it. Well, that's the first thing that came into my mind when I saw the numbers on well, the back. I thought, that's Donald, a fish, isn't it? But, Donald, as long as you voted Conservative, then you have nothing to worry <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, right, of course. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to bring that to your attention and everybody else. All right. Well, we'll, well thanks. Next time we can all have a look. Yeah, thanks for the bad news. <laughs> there, were, there may not be a next time, Donald. I wouldn't be remotely surprised <laughs> if they cancelled the next election for our safety. <laughs> well, am I on the list, am I? Yeah, well, you <laughs> are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks uh, a lot. All right, cheers. Um, I have an, uh, an answer which has just been delivered to me at top speed by my glamorous assistant next door, and it says uh, the following. Uh, sourced from a discussion about this from a message board discussing this. A message board? Yes. Well, who, who is messaging on this board? Uh, if you read the first line, you'll find out. Oh, wow. What an attitude. You believe that? It says, I was a presiding officer at several polling stations across different types of election during the 1980s and the 1990s. When you issue a ballot paper, it is torn from a book of counterfoils, endorsed and given to the voter. However, the voter's registration number is written on the counterfoil, which has the same serial number as the ballot. This means that a voter can indeed be linked to a particular ballot paper. I was told that the ballots and the counterfoils were kept separately for a period of time and could only be brought together with the authority of a court order in the event of an investigation into electoral fraud. Over five elections, I was questioned on this only once. Well, is everybody happy with that answer? No. No, you bet we're not. It can only be brought together with the authority of a court order. Well, what happens if they just bring it together without going through a court? Who's going to stop them? I am outraged. I'm um, seriously uh, considering not voting for the Nazi party again. Otherwise, it might, uh, affect <laughs> might affect my credit rating. <laughs> 0345-6060-973. But as I said before, don't, don't worry about it because we're not going to be having an election again in this country. It has been cancelled for our convenience. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now we don't have to go through that mess again. We can, we can just relax into the, uh, the warm, embracing arms of... This government. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Titchy. Doing an excellent job. And I really mean that. Look at these polling numbers. Good grief. Uh, the Conservatives are on, like, last time I looked, the Tories are on 19%, and uh, the Labour Party are on 44 What? <laughs> wow. And uh, Titchy Suit Size is begging voters not to let Kia Starmer stroll into number 10, which um, rather depends on Titchy Suit Size, really, whether he does or not. I mean, what have you got to offer the floating voter, Rishi Sunak? What have you and your party achieved with 14 years of uninterrupted and complete power over the nation? Can you offer your excellent stewardship of the NHS, for instance? No. No. Can you point to your handling of the economy? No. How about the sheer number of hopeless inadequates that the Tories have foisted on us, like a buffet of buffoons? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we? Yeah, well, they got that one down right. 
as the Drea leader launched a Tories local election campaign, he put on his hurt little puppy dog eyes and pleaded with the nation not to judge him on what he has done or what his predecessors have done, but on some fantasy about what they might do in the future. Oh. This plan that we've heard repeated so often, but we've actually know nothing about. I mean, does the plan even exist? Except for in the mind of the person who says the word plan a lot. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. That's why it's so important we stick to this plan, because we have a plan, we put that plan in place, where there is absolutely no plan, right? We have got a plan, that plan is working, if we stick with it, we can deliver a brighter future for the country. But, like, my main message is plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, no plan. Yeah, it's got no plan. Uh, other than to say the word plan a lot. And the word clear, of course. It's almost as though the Tory party is being sponsored by the word clear. The Prime Minister has been very clear that, and then whatever follows that sentence is a lie. <laughs> I mean, that journalists can sit there and listen to these people say the word clear over and over and over again and not raise a finger of complaint. It's just beyond me. I mean, I can't remember what, which uh, minister it was, but uh, the other day he said th the word clear about 56 times in the space of a minute. The Prime Minister has been clear that he has been very clear that being clear is what the Prime Minister has clearly been. And he has been very clear about that. Uh, and how they... Uh, it was one of the, uh, the BBC uh, lot... And how she sat there and, uh, and, and was just like, he had the, <laughs> it's like he'd, he'd swallowed a bag of clear and was vomiting it up all over her. <laughs> Awful. Uh, as though to use the word, I mean, this must have been focus grouped. It's probably got psychologists on staff who are saying, well, all you have to do is just say the word clear and people will think, oh, well, that, that means it's true then. If he's been clear about it. Say no more. Straying into Monty Python there for just just a brief moment. <laughs> um, Darren says, with songs such as "Let's Do It for Our Country," what? What on earth is that? What have you given me to read there? That Darren text. What is that? I thought it was a song from Before I Was Born. Apologies. I have no idea what that is. It's, it's very disturbing, actually. I might not get to sleep at night. Take it away from me, right now. Adrian can explain the voting numbers. Who's Adrian? Oh, this guy. Isla White. Hello, Adrian. Hello, mate. Um, yeah. Mate. I, I actually asked this question to a presiding officer at our local polling station. Yes. If you went into a polling station and just said when it was Nick Abbott, hmm. they would actually mark you off the register take the number of the voting slip, mm. if somebody else came in after you and said they were Nick Abbott, they would actually issue another voting slip, separate it out into an envelope, and then they will call the police in. <laughs> but what if I'm actually Nick Abbott? They, they would, you would actually get a visit from the um, local constabulary to actually verify did you who went to vote. Right. But apart from that, yeah, they can use it for any any means they like, can't they? The only danger is, is outside the polling station, you get the tellers, and they actually cross off on your um, polling card. You actually have your electoral roll number. So when a teller asks for your polling card on the way out or way in, mm. they can actually mark you off the register. So when they go out and do it door knocking they know actually who's voted by standing outside the polling station all day. So they know not to knock on your door. Right, well, I'm considering being outraged because I've never been asked for my polling card. I just go in there and tell them, tell them who I am and where I live and then they just uh, give me a piece of paper and I go in no. there and I vote for the Nazi party, as everybody should, and then I give it back to them. No, this is outside. You, you have... Um a congregation of people outside. Yeah, well, um, I, I, I just they blast. They do it a lot on right. the island. Well, that's uh, you know, that's what 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 gets up, what what you you people get up to on the Isle of Wight is your own business. <laughs> okay, thank you, mate. <laughs> All right, thank you, mate. <laughs> Albert says, talking about films, can anybody explain in King Kong how he climbs the Empire State Building, but he couldn't climb over that fence on Skull Island? <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. 
It's almost as though that film is uh, not realistic. <laughs> uh, Maidstone, Rob. Hello, Nick. Rob. Well, I'll tell you what, you were right about the average wage stuff. Ah, completely correct in every respect. Yeah, yeah. On Wednesday, I was a, a speaker at a thing about money and mental health. So I looked up the numbers. Yeah. And the average wage per month is £2,274 a month. Right. But about... nobody in the bottom half of all wage earners gets to that because the 50th mark is 2,178. Huh. The bottom 10% earn less than £748 a month. So we really are being played for fools when the government tells us that the average wage in this country is £35,000 because it absolutely, totally and flat out isn't unless they are uh, misusing statistics for their own but, evil ends. Ah, you see, because the thing is what happens at the other end. Because if you're up around the 90%, like, like, the, like the top 10%, yeah. you're earning £5,395 a month. Right. And if you get into the top 1%... Holy moly, you are in the money, honey. £15,081 a month. What? And that's for wages. That's salary. That's not all the other goodies yeah, you might be making. Right. The, the shares uh, and um, yeah. the bonuses and the, all, all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. yeah, so good old Jeremy Hunt was right. A £100,000 salary isn't relatively what it used to be, because depending where you live, it can cost you a lot more. Mm. Yeah, so that that's true. But why we keep taxing just wages and not wealth, yeah. the system is wrong from top to bottom. It's not and wrong, so Rob. It's rigged. But Well, I wasn't going to say that because I was trying to be apolitical at this point. <laughs> I just get people to think about what it must be like to be trying to live yeah. on less than £748 a month. Which is what half the people in this country do. It's disgusting. Absolutely obscene. It is, yes. And we're being gaslit on steroids by the regime who is trying to kid on that they're uh, doing uh, excellent because of the following spurious statistics. Well, the, the statistics are true. They just they don't use them properly. They say right. it's much better than it is, and we all go, "Oh, uh, an average means that's what we're all getting." Right. No, it doesn't. It means some people are getting a hell of a lot more than the rest of us. It's they're waving their hand in front of our eyes and picking our pockets while we're distracted. Is exactly what is happening. Which takes us back to Paul Daniels. Uh, it does. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. All right. Okay. Th good work. Thanks a lot, Rob. It, it, numbers we had on uh, this, but it's like a statistics exam. Boring. I got, I got a D, by the way. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. My first year at uni, they only had one exam, and it was uh, statistics, which I absolutely hated. Numbers, I, I just, I, I just, my brain just clouds over with numbers. I just can't do them. Apart from mental arithmetic, when, you know, any fool can do that. You know, multiplication table, once learned, never forgotten. Six eights of 52. I mean, it's perfectly simple, kids. An idiot could do it. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Right, so what are we doing? Given we're doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. Now, I have to say that uh, it is highly amusing. It's probably the two hours in the week that I laugh the most. We do two, two episodes of our podcast a week now. One comes out on a Monday and one comes out on a Friday. And um, if you if you wish to be amused and you've got a little while to spare, then I think it'll be right up your alley. The idea is that we uh, are trying to solve people's problems, which we do. Every now and again, we come up with some really excellent suggestions. Uh, but we do laugh like a lot. And um, if you uh, have a global player, then you'll find it on there. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Now... If you've got a dilemma that you want us to have a bash at, then send it to the following address, nickandcarol at global.com, N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com, and prepare to be totally satisfied. Oh, right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Hartlepool. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Nick. Uh, how's it going? Not bad. 
Uh, sorry, I was literally just writing down uh, that email address for your podcast. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, also, yeah, I've I don't know where to start. Really, I've 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 written down as I've been listening. I've written down uh, my favourite sequel to a film, which um, is which is well, I've, I put I put down Die Hard with Vengeance, which is the oh, third one. That's the yeah. one with Samuel L. Jackson. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like the one after that as well. The um, the Die Hard Four I thought thought that was excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was all right, but it was it was no Die Hard with the Avengers. But uh, perhaps it was. I don't know. Uh, can't remember what year it came out. But I was like, I was quite young uh, when it came out, and I thought it was. And I saw that first. I saw that before I saw Die Hard right. one. And right. two. Yeah. So, may, so maybe that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's the thing. It uh, was a, it was an excellent start. Hot yeah. down <laughs> summer in the city, and then uh, the, yeah, and then the thing, yeah. Don't tell anybody. But then the thing, no, no spoilers. Warning, warning. Yeah, no, no spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. No spoilers. But uh, the uh, Jeremy Irons is it? Yes. Yeah, that's his name. Great buddy. I know. Great, yeah, yeah, really good. Awesome. But but equally. In Die Hard One, um, Rick. Um, I know he said Rick Mayle. It isn't. No, it's, um, uh, you know who I mean. Yes, uh, I do. Oh, Snape, Professor Snape. <laughs> that's right. What the hell's his name? <laughs> um, you should know. I this know is, I should. This is, this is really embarrassing. Was it Alan Alan, Alan Rickman? Rickman. Yeah. yeah, that's Alan it. Rick Mailman. Yeah, yeah, Alan Rickman. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, another great buddy. Superb. So, yeah. Yes. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, all awesome films as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, uh, yeah, good. Uh, also, about the votes yeah. and stuff, uh, I also, uh, yeah, I made a note, because I remember, uh, I remember, back, it must have been back in, like, 2009, 2010, um, I was seeing this guy, and his mum um, said that she had spoiled her vote but it was like a local election. Mm. Uh, she spoiled her vote, and on the on the local news that night, it said, "And um, uh, it's uh, so much for this party, so much for this." And there were no spoiled votes. Oh, yeah. And Spooky. she's like, oh, I'm, "Yeah, I know I spoiled the vote," and they're saying no spoiled votes. So. Huh. And I'm not in. I'm not big into conspiracies, but, but. you know. <laughs> but yeah, you yeah. never know. Maybe they don't um, actually count the votes at all. Maybe they, uh, the 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 politicians at the top of each party just decide on whose turn it is next, and um, uh, and our votes actually don't uh, matter one way or the other. They don't actually count them. They just throw them away. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Maybe they do. But then you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I bothered the, the last couple of weeks voting for the winner for Big Brother? Oh, you know, well, maybe, that, no, but that, that is, Im no, that is important, <laughs> and that is... Uh, of course it know, is, yeah, that, that is what really right. matters, isn't it? Yeah, cause, Big <laughs> Brother, is that still going? Um, well, it's it's been going, it's, it's peaks and troughs, it's going, it's stopped, it's, it, you know, much like, uh, much like democracy, it's uh, fits and starts, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, up and but, down. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I was going to mention the football shirts and stuff. I don't, I don't know about football. I don't really follow football, but I grew up in a family who are big football fans. So football is kind of like a, a bane of my life, kind of thing, right? But, um, but yeah, it's uh, fairly easy I, to avoid, though. I mean, you have to pretty much pay to watch it these days. What? Well, no, I disagree. It's Unless it's not match easy of the day. I'm I'm a Coronation Street fan, right? Love it. Uh, and no, I know, I know. Judge me, fine. But it really annoys me because yeah, oh, <laughs> you can avoid football. No, you can't. Yeah, because you can. You move Coronation Street for the bloody football. Oh come on! Uh, oh, yeah, but uh, you, you know what? You miss an episode of Coronation Street. You haven't missed anything at all. Has anything actually happened on that program yet? Has Has anything happened in <laughs> football yet? <laughs> Who's the winner? When is the end of the football? Right. You know, there's that great uh, David Mitchell sketch. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like, yeah, when will the football ever end? Like, when, we, when will we find a winner? Anyway, no, yeah, forget all that. Right, but, yeah. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about now, but uh, uh, well, it, it well, ends when the, when, the, uh, when the bloke blows his whistle. Then it's all over. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So, but, um, 
Well, another thing about football. So uh, Brazil and England wearing what? Their oh, their shirts uh, clashed. Clashed. Yeah. What you Apparently. mean? They weren't colour coordinated. Yeah. What? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. I think I'm. A, <laughs> Is that your complaint? <laughs> no, no, literally. They yeah, didn't I'm, go. No, that apparently they like they were similar colours, but in football terms, they go, "Oh, the shirts are clashing," and that means they're the same colour. And I'm like, no, "That's not what clash means." No, but, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to get very far with that argument, though. Uh, <laughs> I don't think right. they're really bothered about uh, about matching. No, here, Jamie, I've got to go, but thanks for that. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Glenn says, what gets me is uh, we've got a government who should be running the country, taking advice from their PR team about a blooming football shirt. Well, this is in, co in inverted commas. Well, 51% of the public hate the new shirt, so let's call a press conference and say what will be most popular, ignoring any proper issues uh, over this because we've got a blooming election approaching. Yes. And I don't believe that 51% of the public hate the new shirt. I believe that uh, a tiny, tiny minority are making a massive noise about it as usual and claiming that they are the silent minority. There's, no, there's nothing silent about them. Constantly bellowing, they are. And Bab says, all these weird people who've gone about the flag of St George being changed on England football shirts, they didn't complain when, in 1966, England's mascot World Cup Willie wore a Union Jack, or that old guy who wore a Union Jack waistcoat at every England match. Patriotism is the last refuge of a scandal, said by uh, Samuel Johnson. Second time that we, uh, we've had uh, that uh, reference on this programme tonight. Educational, no? No. <laughs> Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I really like you. Do you like me? Yeah, sure, why not? Jason sa uh, says, uh, I think the usual suspects are especially angry this week, having been forced to choose between being angry about flags or angry about chocolate eggs that don't include the word Easter. <laughs> Well, they're trying to cancel Easter after they cancelled uh, Christmas. They're cancelling Easter now. Yeah, I saw that uh, there's uh, there's one shop that's selling uh, Easter-related uh, buns without a cross on top, which they have replaced with a tick. What? Yeah. They're very, very upset about that. <laughs> Angry about... Food. 0345 6060 973. Chelsea, Alex. Um, hi. Hi, Nick. Hello, Alex. Alex, the AI from yesterday. What? Oh, uh, I'm the AI from yesterday. You're the AI you from yesterday. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. Your artificial intelligence? Affirmative. Okay. Yeah, we had a talk yesterday, and Did he we? called me AI. Oh, so. Okay, then. Anyway, so uh, I called about Margaret Thatcher yes. and her being labelled as villainous. Villainous, mm-hmm. So, um, I have a bit of a theory. A bit of a theory? Yeah. So I think it was caused by the Labour Party. They want to what make her appear villainous uh, Oh, they they, they don't need to make the, the Labour happened. Party. The Labour Party don't need to make Margaret Thatcher appear villainous to uh, uh, people of a certain age. She it's she is hero. regardless she's of uh, anything that the, the Labour, Labour Party, Party pays millions, if not if not billions, of a supporter fund to make her villainous. You think the Labour Party is spending billions of pounds to make Margaret Thatcher appear villainous? Um, I think so. She's a national. Um, she's a national hero. She should be next to Churchill. Right. Okay. Well, Keep thinking, can... Alex, because uh, that is obviously what you do best. <laughs> Artificial intelligence. I think not. <laughs> um, Sam says you were talking to Ranjit about explaining to people about what has happened uh, that they have been deceived, but these people just won't listen. You said it's because they don't want to admit they're wrong. No, I said that they don't want to lose face, which is related, but not the same. Anyway, he says, I think you're wrong. I think it's because they're 
just too thick and ignorant to listen and keep uh, reading uh, rubbish like the uh, the right wing press and then he goes on and on and on and it doesn't get better from there so I'll just uh, edit that out uh, this says, uh, I watched Robin Williams in The Birdcage last week. It was brilliant, but then I think Robin Williams was an amazing actor. I'm not sure that he was an amazing actor. I thought he was okay in a few things, but not really. I mean, he didn't... I mean, he was a, he was a comic. Some comics can do acting, but I, I, I never really believed him completely in any of his uh, roles. I thought he was pretty good in uh, The Dead Poets Society. The Birdcage... I remember seeing the French one, which I think was the original, but um, I don't recall seeing um, Robin Williams in it. Wasn't it Nathan Lane was the other character? I think that's probably right, yeah. Maybe I did see it, I just don't remember anything about it. Let's see now. Um, now, this person here has made a poem about Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Do we want to hear that? No. No, I think probably not. Uh, but I'll try him. Glasgow. Hello. Hi, Glasgow. Hello, Nell. Hello, Nick. I love your podcast, oh, by the way. I take you to bed, you and Carol. I, I take you to bed at night. Well, that's very <laughs> nice of you, Nell. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote two poems, one called PM Tension about mm. Mrs. Thatcher, the other called Maggie's Bag. The PM Tension is very, very short, and the Maggie's Bag is just maybe about a minute or so. Oh, that's way too long. But hang on one second, Mel. Uh, Nell. Okay. One, one moment. Now, have you, have you pre-listened to these uh -huh. uh, poems for my convenience? Yes. And? They're poems. Yes. They're not offensive. Uh, there's nothing libelous. You won't get sued. <laughs> oh, well, then uh, uh, that uh, does not really pique my interest. Hey, Nell. Hi. Give us a short one. The PM Tension. Mrs. T, she who must be, waddles, short, quick steps and high heels clickety to waiting limo, ducks lacquered head and backsides into bullet-proof cocoon. Man is festered lady, lady in blue, lady not for turning. Hey, now. Lady. Now, in. now, is, was this the short one? That was the short one. Did that seem too long? Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness me. You're, yeah. well, you're certainly not like the longer one, well, but it was quite I, a moving. The other one's quite moving, Moving. Actually. Well, I don't wish to be moved, but if, <laughs> if, if you want to write it down, I'll peruse it at my leisure, and uh, if you send it to me, then... Uh, well, can uh, I... If you'd like to see me on TikTok, I'm on, on, on TikTok under the name Nell Brennan. Absolutely. And also the real Nelly Bean, and you'll get all my right. poems about Boris Johnson and mm. all of those on it. Right, absolutely not. I'm definitely not going to be doing that. But thanks for the uh, thanks for the invite. Cheers, Nell. Another unsatisfied customer. Uh, no, don't really do poems. I find poems to be annoying, mostly. Apart from limericks, of course. There was a young man from Australia. Can't do that one. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Let's see now who's uh, been waiting the longest. I'll be totally fair about this. Belsize Park. Hello, Judy. 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 Hello. Judy. I, um, I'm phoning in response to the first gentleman that phoned about my favourite hobby horse. Why your ba ballot paper number is oh, recorded against right. your electoral number yes. and how you vote can be traced. Yes, to make sure that you didn't vote for the wrong party, Judy. And it's no good the other gentleman phoning in and saying that if somebody had come in before and pretended to be you, mm. they could find them and murder them and hang them and garrote them. You could never trace who that person was because right. you never had to show ID, did you? So they would even if they found that somebody else had voted in your name, mm. having the number, the ballot paper and all of that, you couldn't trace the original person. Right. So that's a load of old toffee. They, they could only but, catch you if you were the person who was impersonating somebody who had already voted in their own name. But if you are the person who comes after somebody has impersonated you, yes. then uh, they ain't going to get them. But now... If we're all going to have to take ID, yeah. there is now no need to have your electoral roll number linked up with your ballot paper number um, in I order that, that they can trace how you vote, but I bet they'll I bet still they carry on doing I it. I bet they will too. 
so um, you don't listen to your programmes, but no. I bring this up every single time we are having a local election or a, a what do you call it, you know? General a, election. A general, <laughs> sorry, yeah. it's very late at night. Non-local. A, a mm-hmm. general election or a local election. So now I have another campaign going on, as well as being thrown out of the polling station every time I go because I query it. (laughs) I now want a none of the above box, please. Can't you just write that in yourself? No. I want an official. Right, okay. No, no. I want an official none of the above above. box. Right. And I want it read out at the count. That's that would be key, yes. It has to be read out at the account. At, at the, account. the account, yeah. However, if you just vote none of the above, then you're going to get led by whoever the extremists want the most. Yes. Because they absolutely will go out and vote, regardless of what the weather is like, and um, and there's absolutely nothing that will persuade them to uh, tick that box, none of the above. And so we, uh, we will, by small increments, just move to the extremes. Well, I can't solve every problem in the world, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, and also, I, still t- I take enormous exception, what with me being old, 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 I take exception to you keep on telling me how I'm going to vote. Right. How old are you? Very, very old. Very, very old. Will you get this then? It's a very, very old version of that tune. So if they are still recording our electoral roll number against our ballot paper number, Uh I would like everybody to query it. Then you can all get thrown out the polling (laughs) station the same as me. (laughs) I don't see why I'm the only one. Right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll see you um, in the gutter where we've been thrown uh, moments after we've uh, voted. How does that well, sound? You know where I live now because you've just said the area. Yeah. And the local polling station right. is in that area. Right. Well, I'll. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll be there all end, day long. I end up outside on the pavement, right. but will betide somebody who tries to do one of those check things. Yes. Exactly. They don't want to get on the wrong side of you. No. No. All right, good work. Right. Thanks a lot, okay. Judy. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. James texts Rocky 2, brilliant sequel. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen any of the Rocky films. Yo, yo, yo. I, I don't know. There's something about that guy that rubs me up the wrong way. You know, um, what's his name? The guy from uh, Rocky. What's his name? You know the guy from uh, Rocky? Jim says, Fury Road, not Thunder Road. Yeah, it was the Thunder Dome, wasn't it? Which wasn't that great. That's with the one with uh, Tina Turner in it. Rock and roll! But Fury Road is absolutely epic. If you have not seen Mad Max Fury Road, then uh, you are in for a treat. It's a good long while since I've seen it. It must be about a year or so, so um, I'm thinking of treating myself. Let's see now. Uh, who's been waiting the longest? Um, Winchester, Simon. Good evening, Nick. Yes, sir. Well, a mm, couple of things. Um, so, are they going to start taking his toys on Monday, do we think? Whose toys? Mr. Trump. Oh. It's weird. Um, he is such a dope. He he brags that he has got uh, an enormous amount of cash. I make $400 million a year, so what difference does it make? He's <clears throat> bragging that he's got $500 million in cash, as he says. Mm. And then, mm. in the same breath, says that he hasn't got the money to pay the $500 million fine. He's yeah. such a dope. Uh, well, hopefully this is the start of him unravelling now. Although, uh, I've read that, um, you know that Truth Social Media site? That, uh, he's, he, 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 that, he, yeah, he set he it up Truth as... Uh, Central. Truth Central, yeah. He set it up as, yeah. a, uh, as the sort of right-wing version, of the even more right-wing version of Twitter. Yeah, I'm on it. Are you? No, I've never even seen it. Um, no, I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. And what uh, is there? I, I only went on there. I only went on there to see what he puts see, on right, there. Right. Okay. And he gets a lot of abuse on there. To be fair. Yeah, no doubt. And um, mm. they've valued it at something like three, three and a half billion dollars. 
and they're yeah. um, they're selling. Um, I, I think he's it's being merged from one company into uh, another. If that thing is worth three hundred billion dollars, I'm a knickerbocker glory with cream on top. It's not. It's what has happened is is all these dingling sticker fans have all signed up to it and bought shares. Yeah, to, to boost the value. Right. And uh, uh, even if he sells it on Monday, the funds are locked for six months. Well, yeah, he can't so get them. That's not going to dig him out. But he could leverage that against uh, a loan with, uh, if there are any banks on earth that still want to do business, <laughs> business but with he him. Can't tra- he can't do any business with any banks, and nobody's come to save him yet. Uh, hmm. So now they're looking at um, foreign actors bailing him out, in yeah. which case... He's got a lot of secrets for sale. Well, um, I think that um, in one of his uh, bank accounts, it might be full to the brim with rubles by this time next exactly. week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, well, it, couldn't, it, it couldn't happen to a worse person. Oh, shut I, up! Yeah. Uh, I tell you, I watch it like a soap opera. I'm absolutely glued to it. Every yeah. little detail. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is, now, I phoned you a few weeks ago telling you it was Saturday night and I hadn't done a single job in my taxi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same thing tonight. Really? Yeah, and I've just been through my local town, which in this case is Winchester. Yeah. I don't I don't work in Winchester, I work in a different town, but um, there's nobody about. So, you know... All of this trickle down economics make the tax uh, make the rich richer, and it trickles down. There's, no, so, in reality yeah, there's no such there's no such thing. There's no such no, thing as trickle no. down economics. It's actually trickle no. up economics from the poor to the rich. There is nobody spending money anywhere yeah. because nobody has any. Now and it might it's be ridiculous. It, yeah, it might be because this is the part of the month just before people get paid, so they haven't they actually haven't got any money. And, and I imagine that this close in to the beginning of the year, people are still paying off their Christmas bills. So they'll go through January and you know that zips mm-hmm. by. February is quite but, quick too. And I think that the bills will really start to mount up in uh, this month. So so maybe after people get paid next week no, it will ease no. up a bit. No, I don't. The, the thing is, I've been doing this job 20 years. When I first started doing this job, you could go out there any day of the week, and mm. if you didn't take 200 quid, there was something wrong. Right. Fast forward to now, after 14 years of Tories, <laughs> and a Saturday night yeah, in March. That's bad. And there's no one about. Terrible. And my partner's son, he's uh, early 20s, and he was out in Basingstoke. Um, the other night, and even he said to her that the curry houses were empty. Mm. There's no one. You know, nobody. The cost of living is is in this country. <laughs> well, what we've got used to is absolutely incredible. And if the, if uh, Americans were suffering this level of um, unaffordability, they would be yeah. rioting in the streets. But we yeah. we just sort of shrug our shoulders and, and uh, put up with it. I guess it's like slow torture. It's like the uh, the frog boiling in the water thing. It's just come on us uh, relatively slowly. And um, we it's almost like we don't notice how colossally yeah. we're being ripped off. Here, Simon, I've got to go, but I wish you all the best. Thanks for that. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late. New York, Sly. Hey, is that Nick? Yes, Sly. Nick, i got to tell you, I was working out of my gym over here. Right, you know, working at my gym, and I heard Nick Abbott says he never saw Rocky. Yo, 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 yo. Nick, I'm a little offended because you know I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. Yeah, okay, yo. I thought, <laughs> I thought one day, Nick, maybe you and I can get in the gym. Uh, yeah. Maybe I could come down to the radio station. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll meet you outside. Nick, you tell me you never saw a single Rocky movie. No, never saw a single Rocky movie. Sorry about that. You never saw me punch the robot and the Russian. <laughs> there was a robot. Part four, part five. I can't believe it. Nick, I got a t-shirt I'm wearing right now. I mm. work out with this. It's Nick Abbott. I mean, I think, I figure like, you know, it's a two-way street. I'm out there fighting. I'm getting the word of Nick Abbott out there. I hear it on the radio. Nick Abbott has never seen a Rocky movie. Not even Rocky 1. Not even Rocky 1, no. no nor... Nick, I'm, heart, I'm heartbroken. Well, I, I think you'll probably get over it. Thanks a lot, Sly. <laughs> Listener with material. Oh, no. <laughs> 
0345 6060 973. Wayne says, I'm sorry to say I totally disagree with your choices in the best action film. Aliens is okay. Mad Max is rubbish. <gasps> the best sci-fi horror film made was John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> what? Where, where they're all in some ice... Uh, uh, like, uh, some state uh, ice station. Not an ice station, but a, um, some sort of weather thing in the middle of the uh, North Pole or something like that. And there's a mist that comes through them. That... Do me a favour. Diana says, six eights... She's attempting to correct me here. Correct my mental arithmetic. Can you believe that? She says, six eights of 48. No, no, Diana. Negative. That is incorrect. You want to educate yourself. I mean, it's perfectly simple. Six eights of 52. Any idiot knows that. You're embarrassing yourself on national radio here, Diana. Let's have, um, Manchester. Stephen. How are you doing, Nick? Good, thanks. Right. Yeah. Last time me and you talked, Ronaldo signed for United. That worked out well, didn't it? Wow, that was a long time ago. I know. We had a bit of a chat that night, didn't we? I have no we? idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got to say, yeah. um, you were right. <laughs> I was a god, and you were right. So, okay, uh, then. Didn't work out well. Didn't work Listen, out, no. Second Mad Max film's better than the first one. And the first one's yeah. pants, isn't it? It's like Prisoner Cell Block H on wheels. Yeah, it was one. a bit cheap, that's right. The second yeah. one was better, yeah. but the fourth one is the best. And it could be... Th uh, um, I, wa I watched it. It's that one with uh, Charlene, isn't it? For mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and, um... Uh, uh, Tom Hardy, yeah. Yeah, Very Tom good. Hardy, so, yeah. The, the, the thing about that film that I didn't get, Nick, it was kind of all about her with a robotic arm. It wasn't really a lot about him, was it? it a robotic a arm? Yeah, she had that, like, um, robotic arm, didn't she? Charlene, you know? Um, did she? Have you watched the same film that I've watched? Well, I'm not sure now. She was a robot? <laughs> yeah, she, no, no, she had like a um, uh, robotic arm, didn't she? And uh -huh. it, she she was kind of the, the Mad Max character, wasn't she? She was a bit, I, I thought Tom was a bit lame in that. Oh, honest, come it? on, you seriously need to see that again, Stephen. I mean, the, the I, amount of things... I'll watch it tomorrow, the, um... I, I, I'll tell you what, I stand. All right. Uh, and she, they, then, they didn't go on during that film and did this, so there was a bit of an atmosphere during yeah, that Yeah, apparently, yeah. They didn't, uh, yeah. They didn't like each uh, other. No, that's it, right. Greatest second film ever. Got to be The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, The first film that didn't off really it. have the money to do what they wanted, the second film they did, so... Yeah. You know. No, but and, uh, it's the story. It's all about the story, Stephen. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. If you ain't got the story, then... Uh, great then... Young Empire Strikes Back, Nick. Yeah. Come on. Mm, secondly... No. Not secondly, for me. Oh, thirdly. Postal votes. Yeah. So, anyway, so I've been doing postal votes the last few years. Have you ever done a postal vote, Nick? No, I haven't. It's impossible. I show up in person. You've got to have the intellect of... Stephen Hawkins and Alan Turing just to work out what's going on with the effing envelopes. <laughs> so you get envelope A, it's delivered to you, right? Yeah. But then you open it up and then you've got to fill in envelope C. Right. You've got to put envelope D in envelope B and then post envelope C. Right, and if you get it wrong, then you have to go back to the beginning and well, start it's, again. Well, it's good to know. Guatemala or somewhere like that. It's right. impossible. I so, did not know that. All right, well, thanks for the thanks for the bad news there, Stephen. I I got to go because you know time is running out. And there's a picture of um, Sh Charlene. Is that Sh what's her name? Charlize Theron. Charlize, something like that, yes. with a with a, an actual robot arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that film like two or three times now, and I do not remember that detail. Well, I don't know what to tell you, mate. Sorry. No, I just have not been paying attention. Hey, Nick, wake up, you idiot! You're missing important uh, details. <laughs> um, uh, Sanjay says do yourself a massive favour and watch Driving Madeline in French but uh, I think that most of your listeners will love it I'm absolutely not going to do that not now, not ever, never 
French. Boring. Yeah, that sounds like education to me, and uh, that's 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 right out. 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 That's that's right out.